turn on at you because you missed a good night, because you didn't. It was a load of rubbish. It was not. I enjoyed it. Well, you would, you, all that caterwauling. No, it was where you went sloping off without telling us. I've told you, Vera, what happened. Gail had a bit of trouble with kids, so I went round there. Well, why the devil didn't you pop it in Rovers as you were passing and tell us? Because I, I didn't think, did I? Will you get back to work and let me get myself ready? There's some of it with her. There is. So you don't have to be that tip mate used to it that one out, do you? There's always some of it with us. Hello. Oh, Alf. Oh, come in there. Uh, I've got that thing for you. What oh. thing's that, then? Mind your own business, really. Will you get across road? Oh. No, Zingley. Have you ever old tells? Have you heard old? Uh, that's why I came round to see you, love. Last I heard was when Audrey rang to say Brian had rung to say he had Nicky. Yes, I know. I were there when that happened. She said she was going to ring you. That's why I didn't give you a knock when I got back. Oh, well, she didn't ring this morning, so that means he hasn't either. Oh, I don't know. Well, <sighs> they didn't tell the police about Brian ringing, did they? No, not that I know. I've well, they, they hadn't when I left. Ah, well, it might be better if somebody did. Oh, would it? I don't know what would be best. No, look, look, Honestly, these listen, days everything's listen, going look, wrong. We've got to find that little lad before something else happens. You should have rung us last night, love. As soon as he'd rung you, you should have let us know. I know. I just thought he might have brought Nicky back. But he didn't, did he? And you've had a sleepless night, haven't you? No, I have. Well, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I thought you might have felt better knowing we were looking for them. As it is. Now, you do promise, don't you, if you hear anything else? Yes. I'll make sure she does. Good. Now, was it a call box he was ringing from? Uh, I don't know. Mr Singleton took the call. Brian had rung off before I could get to it. Yeah, it was a box. You know, Jeff said he heard the pips. Did he say if he heard anything peculiar? It, trains, traffic, music, anything out of the ordinary? No, not to me, he didn't. You'll have to ask him now. So. Yes, well, well, I don't think I've got his address. It's in the book, oh. under the S's. Okay. S's. What's his name again? Singleton. Oh, yes. Sing Singleton, yeah. Right. Okay. We'll see what he has to say. Okay, let's sum up. As far as we know, your son isn't included in anybody's passport. So we can't spirit him out of the country, even if he wanted to, which I'm sure he doesn't. And from what I've heard so far, your ex-husband doesn't seem likely to do the little boy any harm. From my experience, I'd say that as soon as Nicky becomes a handful, Mr Tilsley will bring him back. Men are like that. It was. I'm just after the wholesalers. Oh, I heard you got a boyfriend there. Well, I'm afraid you've heard wrong. Bye. <laughs> uh, uh, Lord Alec wants a notebook. I think he's going to clock us in. Well, clock him if he does. I'll get it up. Okay. Hello, Kevin. Hello, Alan. Brian Tilsley. Oh, hi. I'm ringing to see if you're still interested in the garage. Oh, yeah, of course I'm. As long as the price is right. Oh, we can talk about that. The point is, I'm interested in this setup up in North Lancashire. I'm up there now, and the fella who's selling it wants to get his hands on a few reddies. <laughs> who doesn't? Right. That's why I'm coming to you. How do you feel about letting me have a couple of grand deposit in cash? Uh, can you raise it by tomorrow? Two thousand. I don't know, Brian, but I'll try. I can't say fairer than that. I'll phone you back at uh, one thirty. see what the score is. If you can manage it, then we'll make arrangements to meet someplace, OK? OK, yeah. But as I say, as long as the price is right. I'll ring you later. Thanks, Rita. Don't Ta forget what I said. Ta-ra, love. Hello. Who was that? That was Brian Tilsley. He wants to know if we're still interested in the garage. Are we? Well, of course we are. I mean, it's a great deal, love, and we're getting it cheaply. No, we're only ask him. What does he want? Well, he wants to know if we can let him have uh, £2,000 as a deposit in cash by tomorrow. Can we make that? Yes, if you still think it's a good thing. Good. He's going to ring back at 1.30, see so it's OK. Well, draw it out and knit round to a garage with it for him. He's not there. He's doing some other deal up in... Uh, North Lancashire somewhere, he said. Sounds a bit bleak. Yeah. 
can't go again because I'm tired. Yeah. Can't go again. Whoa. Now if you fall in, I'm not jumping in after you. Come on. Can we have a ride, Dad? I told you. It would pay to ride those ponies. Let's go and pay. Now you be patient, will you? You'll get your ride. We'll go and ask later. Let's go and have that drink you've been riding for. Hey. Eh? I'm going to ride a pony. I'm going to ride a pony. Hello, is uh, Mr. Cecil Newton there, please? Alec Gilroy, Rover's return. Come on, Cecil. Hello, Cecil. Alec Gilroy, how are you? Good, good. Oh, not so bad, not so bad. Getting me a fair share of hard work, but that never did anybody any harm, did it? I, uh, I was going to ask you, have you heard any more news of the vanishing lady? No, I've heard nothing either. What? Well, of course you can, Cess. You can always rely on me to keep the ship afloat. As a matter of fact, while we're on, I was going to mention that it would be nice if things were, uh, well, you know, regularised. So that I know what I'm doing, how far I can go, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, I mean, eventually I'd still like the tenancy, of course. But I do realise there are certain legalities involving our absent friend. <laughs> yes, I know, I know. <laughs> no, no, I mean, all I'm asking is that you give the matter a little bit of thought, you know. Just in case, uh, well, I mean, you never know, do you? Uh, yes, and in, and in the meantime, I'll... Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Oh. Oh, well, it's very nice to know that we're doing good business. But don't think it's good enough for me, Seth, because it isn't. No, no, if there's one thing I'm not, it's uh, complacent. Yes, yes, of course, I shall pass on your thanks. Re Right, right, yes, well, I'll speak to you again soon, I hope. Right, bye. Morning, ladies. Morning. I've just been speaking to the brewery. Have you heard anything? Not a whisper, not a single flaming whisper. In fact, I'm sorry I rang them. I ran into a broadside from Cecil Newton. He's not at all happy with the business we're doing. Not at all happy. He asked me to pass it on. So, consider it passed. I thought we weren't doing bad. Well, so did I. Ah, so did I. But apparently, he set targets when they did this place up and we're not oh. meeting them. So I'm afraid it's heave ho, me hearties, batten the hatches and get the wind in your sails. Hey, we're not the ship in, you know. That's on Guardside Street. Uh, yes, I know it well, Hilda. I also know that it's about to sink any minute, which we are not. This pub is going to be the pride of the fleet, Newton and Ridley's flagship. Why, well, we're going to manage that. With good ideas and hard work, Betty, oh. for which there's no substitute. Just leave the ideas to me. Every ship needs a captain, and if you'll accept that that's me... Is me the one it, who goes down with the ship? You don't listen, dear. We're not going down. We're sailing into sunny waters, and we shall all reap the benefit. Well, how exactly? Well, for a start, we'll keep our jobs. And if we bring money in, it's only fair that some of it should come back to us in the way of bonuses and rises, oh. which I shall certainly recommend, OK? Well, you can give me a rise any time. Uh, you're a sceptical lot, aren't you? We're all in the same boat. <laughs> Thank you, Hilda. And it's up to us all to pull together, shoulders to the wheel, best foot forward. All hands to the pumps. Thank you again, Hilda. Yes, now I'll get my thinking cap on. Hilda, you get the deck swabbed. <laughs> and, and you two, lovelies, prepare to cast off. Is there any coffee? In your cup. Just want the water boiling. Right. Well, at least he's thinking about us, you know, I mean, rises and that. Oh, forget it, Hilda. He's thinking about number one, like he always does. You watch. <laughs> Bye, I can. I thought I were clinical. Betty's not being cynical, though, Hilda. Alex always wanted this pub. Yeah, and I don't care if he gets it over our dead bodies. Come on. Come on. Whoa. Like hey, much better than school, isn't it, son? Yeah. Hey, and don't you worry. Your mum will sort it out. They'll know. Anyway. You'd much rather be with me, wouldn't you? Yeah! Yeah! Run him, cowboy! <coughs> what time's up with you in? One o'clock, it's his late start. Oh, isn't every day? Yeah. Now, now. 
Rita, will you tell him that it pays to advertise? It pays to advertise. Don't blame me, she said it. I know it pays to advertise, but it never pays to waste money. Who's wasting money? All I want is an advert in this week's recorder. I mean, how are people going to know where the shop is if we don't tell them? Don't worry, they'll find out and be patient. And you'll find out as well. Ken, Ivy's coming in. Ask her what's happening. I'll go, Michelle. Excuse me, Mrs. Tudor. You happen to know what's happened to Brian? Well, he's not been in all morning. I've not heard nothing from him. Well, I want to know what I'll be getting on with. Uh, look, go and sit there now, too, Lenny. Uh, you go, Michelle. I'll give you money after. Okay. Uh, look, uh, you're bound to get to know sooner or later, Kevin, but I will try to keep it quiet for a minute. Uh, there's something uh, gone wrong with Brian and Nicky. Aye. Aye, what are you having? They're on either. What's she doing with Anto? I don't know. I'm not nosy by nature, like so. Tim up. Oh, well, I just hope it sorts itself out. Oh, I'm sure it will, love. Listen, I think I'll nip round to girls and see if our brain's been back on again. So, uh I'll soldier on till here, so... <laughs> You've got a good lad there, let me tell you. Hey, listen, uh, I'm just uh, slipping round to girls. I'll see you back there later. What's she playing at, eh? Well, don't ask me. She's supposed to be buying the drinks. Excuse me. Jack said he won't be in today. <coughs> Back playing him up. He's what? He's not skiving. He's bent double. Bend him double? Well, I just said to give you a message. Right. Hello. Hey, it looks like you'll soon be working for us. What? Yeah, well, Brian's been on to Alan and he wants to meet him tomorrow to fix up the deal. Didn't you know? Well, I think there's something you ought to know, Mrs. Fairclough, about Brian. We've just been talking to Ivy and... Well, you hear stories and that, don't you, about some taking kids off to Australia and that? Well, I don't think it'll come to that, love. Hey, you never know. He's a funny lad, that Brian. There you go. Got your dinner for oh. yourself. Oh, all right. Oh, well, we'll just have to keep talking, won't we? We will, yeah. I think Mrs. Tilsley wanted to keep it quiet, not blasting all over the place. Come on, Kev. Alan's meeting tomorrow. Yeah, well, still think we should have said no. Alec, we've got some tonics brought up. Ordering slimline. Yeah, down the cellar. I know some are tells and all. I'm a woman and women aren't supposed to carry heavy weights. Gloria, get some tonics up. I'm a woman and all, and don't tell me you haven't noticed. Well, who's going to get them then? We haven't got a man behind the bar. Have we said that? You know what I mean. He means we haven't got a man behind the bar that works. I mean, we haven't got a man behind the bar that does that kind of work, not with Jack off. Well, if that's how it is. I'm sorry, lovey. We've no tonics up. But why can't you go down for some? You're not paralysed, are you? <laughs> Hello. What are you doing here? Well, I've come out for my lunch. I do eat occasionally, you know. Oh. Have you locked up? No, I've left Alan in the shop. I said he was waiting for a phone call. Oh, Lord, he is. Betty, cancel that vodka and tonic I've got to dash. Right, lovey. Oh, love it, please. What's the matter? I'll tell you later, lovey. You want me to meet you where? Anderton service station. It's on the M61. You know where it is, don't you? Yeah, it is. It's a bit far out, isn't it? I know, mate. I'm sorry, but uh, you'd be helping me a lot if you can make it. Um, what? Hang on a second. What do you want? What does he want? He wants me to take him some money. It's all right. I know what I'm doing. You don't. He's ran off with Nicky. He's what? He's abducted Nicky. Gail's going spare. Well, what do you want me to do? Carry on. Pretend you know nothing. Hello, Brian. Uh, what? No, sorry about that. I was, I was looking for a pen. Uh, Anderton service area, you say? Six o'clock. It's the car park of the northbound carriageway. It's the way you'll be coming. Uh, bring the cash with you. OK, right now, that's six o'clock. Uh, Anderton service area, northbound car park, right? That's right. I'll see you then. And uh, thanks. Now, well, what was all that about? Are you sure that's all he said? I'm positive. He said, tell Gail, Nicky's with me and he's all right. And he didn't say who you were? No, I gave your number when I picked the phone up. He knew you'd get the message. And that was, uh, when, when was that? Uh, it was about ten o'clock, was it? And not a word since. What's he doing? He's wondering what to do next. Look, let, let's go over it. Well, he took Nicky just after we got back from Debdale Park, so chances are he was watching us when we arrived here. 
And we were pretty happy, weren't we? Yes. Well, that's what he'd see. His ex-wife and kids. Was it a strange fella enjoying themselves? When he'd got nothing. I mean, in those circumstances, I might have done exactly what he did. Well, you think good of everybody, don't you? No. No, I don't. I'm just trying to analyse the situation. Now, according to his mother, he'd had a row with his lady friend. Well, she didn't say that. All right, all right, she didn't, but Mr Roberts did. Well, she was just protecting Brian, wasn't she? She didn't know that he'd taken him then, and she didn't want us to think of any reason why he should. But there was. His girlfriend had chucked him out. He got nowhere to go. His family was happy without him. S sometimes we're pushed into doing things that we don't want to do, Gail. And then we, we regret it. Yeah, he'll be regretting it. That's not the end of it, because it's one thing regretting something, and it's another putting it to rights. I, I don't think he knows how to do that yet, Gail, but he will. I wish he'd do it quick. I just wish that phone would ring! Gail, I, I'm feeling a, a bit embarrassed being around at a time like this. I mean, it's a family affair, isn't it? And I'm not too sure I should be a part of it. Your mother-in-law doesn't want me around. It's understandable. Yes, yes, I suppose so. But I'm not too sure about your mother and Mr Roberts either. But anyway, it's you that I'm really bothered about. Do you want me hanging around? I mean, I'm a nuisance. Don't leave me, Jeff. They're the ones who confuse me. You don't. I don't know what I'd have done without you. Really? Really. Here she is. Another ten minutes and we'd have found her. Oh. Here, are you practising to be a doctor? What's that supposed to say? On Golden Pond. Well, I thought it was some at Brock Flushes. <laughs> did you watch that video of Mrs. Morgan? Yes, I did. Was it disgusting? Well, I couldn't see anything wrong with it. Well, don't sound so disappointed. Oh. Go on, get off to the pictures wherever oh. it is you're going. Are you sure? Yeah, we won't be long oh. after you. Oh, I'll say good night then. Good, yes. night, good, night. good night. Good night. Good night, Emily. Good night. I'm not bothered with the cold. Oh. Well, have you decided? No. Come on, you've had long enough. You know. Who did you hear it from? Sally? You heard it from someone else? Not just someone else, from Ivy. Well, all right, then Ivy, but she could have got it wrong as well, you know. That kid's early fairy at the best of times. So what are you going to do? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and meet him, I'm going to give him the money, get him to sign the paper, and that garage is ours. Do you think more about buying that garage than you do about a child being taken from its mother? You don't listen to a word I but say. But he has, you? Alan. He has. It's rumoured he has. Rumoured. There's only one way to deal with rumours, Rita, especially round here, and that's to ignore them. All right. And say it stops being a rumour. Well, that's different. But until then... Do you mind if I come round to see you, love? Only I can't settle. Are you on your own? Oh. Well, never mind. I'd rather be with you, just in case. OK, I'll see you later. Ciao. Has it been on again? No. I can't believe it. I just can't believe it. Oh, give over. Fellas are pinching the kids every day and we... Papers are full of it. I don't mean that. I mean, I'd be keeping it quiet. All day working next to her and not a word. Oh, I am. We're there. Well, what good would it have done? Go on, ask yourselves. What good would it have done? Well, that's her all over, isn't it? Mm. Only thinking about herself. We'd have felt better sharing your troubles with you. But that's what's wrong with you. Look, when I have a problem, first place I run is your house. I know, that's perhaps why I don't do the same, baby. You drive me mad. Look, well, see what I mean? Look, don't you think I've got enough to worry about at the moment? I'm scared stiff the police are going to catch out Brian before he's got a chance to bring Nicky back. I wish to God they'd never brought them into it. You're right. I mean, look... Don't say that you read things like that in papers every day, Vera, else I'll throw this all over you. Well, I didn't mean that. What I meant was, well, how can police find him when nobody knows where he is? I'm going round to Gales. Well, I'm right, aren't I? I mean, look, it could be anywhere. Right, I'll be back at ten. Yeah. Hey, hey! 
Where are you sloping off to? Oh, don't fret, pet. I'm not skipping the country. I'm just nipping round to the Golden Promise. I've got a young chanteuse making her debut, and I promised I'd hold her hand. Who's holding house? Hold your own. Make a ring round the bar as a protest against unemployment. And think yourself lucky. We need some light ales up. I got the last lot. And you get the next lot, and the lot after that. I am still a woman, and you're still the only man behind this bar. Betty, I don't think you realise, but I have got a heart condition. We all have. Exercise will do it good. Well, not me heart, it won't. <laughs> Look, I thought you said you'd never ask your staff to do anything you couldn't do yourself. Ah, uh, that was when we were on a ship, Hilda. Mm. Oh, yeah. What is it you want? Oh, my tails. Everybody's going missing these days. First of all, it were Bets, then my lad. I think I'll do a flyer myself. You so you should after what you said to either. Look, I said not to be ashamed of. If their brain's daft enough to pinch the kid, is daft enough to do anything. Keep your voice down, Carl. Well, nobody knows what I'm talking about. And I still say I've is daft. This is a police matter, choose out. Well, satisfied? Yeah. Come on. Gail, can I ask you something? Is it true Brian's disappeared with Nicky? Yes. Well, then we've something to tell you. Alan? Yeah, uh, just that uh, Brian rang me today a couple of times. Brian? He didn't say anything about Nicky? No, he wants me to meet him at uh, service area on the M61 and take him some money. It's, um, it's a deposit on the garage. And are you going? Well, from what I've heard, I think... I'd like you to go, Alan. Take the police with you now. Hang on. Hang on a minute. Give our brain a chance. He might be bringing Nicky back. You can understand that, Gail, can't you? Yes. I understand very well. You worried about your son. He's not the only son in the world, Ivy. I've got a son, and I'm worried about him. Worried sick. So if there are any decisions to be made about Nicky, I'll be the one that's making them. All right? And so far, I've made one. I'd like you to go and meet Brian, Alan. And I'd like to go with you. Oh, hang on a minute, love. Listen, I don't want to get involved. I all. want to go with you, Alan. All right. Even she knows something's wrong. Morning, Ivy. Well, morning. See, you're up early, too. I take it you were suffering in the night as well. Uh, how do you mean? Our new factory shop sign, blinking on, off, on, off all night long. Yeah, I did notice it, now you come to mention it. There must be something wrong with it. What's up? Mr Baldwin's new sign. I was just saying to Ivy. Hello, you have to excuse me. To... Ah, look at it. Burning juice, all that valuable energy going to waste. Lighting a room up at night, yes. But a shop sign, no. Well, yes, I agree, Mr. Subden. But what annoys me is the way it keeps going on and off. The effect on my bedroom curtains. I've had a terrible night, and Ivy says she's had the same thing. Public nuisance, you know. It keeps you awake. You want to complain. <laughs> yes, I dare say, but Mr. Baldwin doesn't take very kindly to complaints, and he is my boss, you know. Oh, frightened of victimisation, eh? Well, what you want is somebody to take up the cudgels on your behalf. Now, I remember when we were waiting for Demov at the end of the war. If you'll excuse me, Mr. Sugden, I have to get on. Ah, well, leave it with me. Oh, come in. There's no news. Hmm? No news, no. Every time there's a knock at that door, I think it's somebody bringing Nicky back to me. Oh, he'll get him back, Gail, and he'll be all right, I'm sure of that. Because, well, I'm Brian, well, he'd never harm Nicky, never in this world. I keep telling myself that, Ivy. And I want to believe it. No, it's true, and you know it, Gail. Anyway, you'll be seeing Brian, won't you, later on tonight, with this meeting he's got with Alan Bradley. It's Nicky I want to see. 
If I can get Nicky back, I don't care if I never see Brian again as long as I live. Oh, now, look, girl, I know how you're feeling. Ivy, Oh, I... yes, I do. The reason I've come round is because I've not slept all night, hardly. I mean, I've got Audrey there threatening to bring the police to our Brian, lying in wait for it. All right, I know that's not your worry, Gail. You're worried about your son. Well, I'm worried about my son I've as well, you know. I've not told the police about this meeting, Ivy, if that's all you've come to find out. Thank God for that. If I can get to Brian and talk some sense into him, and if I can get him to give Nicky back to me, then I don't want the police to have anything to do with it. And more for Nicky than Brian, to be frank. I don't want Nicky seeing his dad arrested or anything like that. Thanks, Gail. Um, I'm praying for you and Nicky, you know. I'm praying for Brian as well. Yes, I am. I'm praying he'll see some sense and bring Nicky back home. Right, breakfast ready. Bacon sandwiches. How's that grab you? Hey. <laughs> Home. We're gonna have a new home, son. You and me. And it's gonna be okay. You just wait and see. Will Mum be there? Come on. Eat your breakfast. Have you been up in his bedroom at all? Whose bedroom? Alec Gilroy's. Mm. Ah, yeah, because I've been up in his bedroom. What do I want to go up in his bedroom for? Ooh. I have to go up there, don't I? Clean up his mess after mm. him. Bye, heck, it's an eye opener, his cleaning, Betty. Mm. The things some fellas will use for an ashtray. Oh. Then there's his clothes. Mm. <clears throat> it's ten o'clock, Hilda. Is it? As a matter of fact, it's two minutes past. Oh, fancy. Very proud of that watch, aren't you? Was it a present? Look, you haven't even got that bar floor mop yet, and if you don't get your skates on, we'll be opening up, that floor will still be sopping. If there's one thing people hate when they walk in a pub, it's a wet floor. It'll be dry as a bone, not too much water, that's the secret. Another cup of tea, Hilda? Yeah, go on. Right, I love it. Never mind more cups of tea, Hilda. I want you out in that bar getting it mopped. There'll be plenty of time for cups of tea when you've finished. Whew, when I've finished, I've got better things to do than sat about here supping yeah. cups of tea, thank you very much. I'm surprised at you, Betty, too, encouraging her. You could see I wanted her to get weaving, and there's you topping her cup up. Oh, you need to fretted. Hilda takes her time, but she gets through. Oh, more or less. <laughs> more or less. The days of more or less round here have gone, Betty. More or less is how things have been done for far too long in this pub. From now on, there'll be more jumping to it and less lying down on the job. Uh -huh. <clears throat> be all set for tonight, then. No, well, I don't know about that. How do you mean? I thought you and Gail had got it all worked out. I thought it was all fixed. Well, I just keep wondering if I'm doing the right thing, you know. I mean, I arranged to meet Brian fair and square. This way, I feel like I'm tricking him. Tricking him? Look, you're helping Gail get a little lad back. There's nothing wrong with that. Well, he's Brian's lad as well, you know. I mean, don't get me wrong, he was out of order taking that kid away like that. But he is the kid's father, after all. <sighs> what does Rita think about it? I haven't discussed it with her. There'd be no point. I mean, with a thing like this, women don't think. I mean, they just have a gut reaction. You know, the mother must have her child. Yeah, well, that's the right reaction. It's dead right. Well, if you're so sure, why don't you take Gail out to this motorway cafe, eh? eh? I mean, I'm not even family, am I? Ah, no. No, no, but it's you that Brian's expecting to see, you see. I mean, that is the whole point, isn't it? You know, we'll get close enough to him to talk to him before things get too ugly. Ah, uh, I suppose so. I just keep wondering how I got involved in all this, you know. All I wanted to do was buy a garage. Why shouldn't it be? Just looked a bit funny, that's all. He will take our girl with him, won't he? Of course he will. Stop worrying. Oh, I still say she should have got the police in. I have a good mind to ring him up and tip him off. Oh, come on, Audrey. That's all we need, isn't it? You know, Brian wrestling with half a dozen bobbies and young Nicky standing there watching. Is that what you want to see? I just want to see Nicky. Hi. Hi. What's all this? Oh, just the post bag. It's piled up a bit. Honestly, if I ignore it for a day or two, it seems to multiply in the <laughs> night. It's mainly this day nursery business is driving off the mum's mad. Well, mum's a nursery sounds right up my street. If there's something there that justifies the piece in the recorder, just give me the word. Oh, I know, love. And if I thought it'd be helpful, I would. But maybe I can get better results without going public. Oh, talk about going public. Susan was in the office this morning checking the half-page ad for this factory shop they've just opened. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, what about lunch? Lunch? Oh, it's not got to that time already. <laughs> I deduce from that. There are no little treats simmering on the hot plate. Sorry, Joe. Okay, well, in that case, I'll treat you. Come on, let's give the rovers a whirl. Well, 
actually, I could do with finishing these. Do you fancy going on your own? Well, not much, no. I mean, I fancy having lunch with you. Well, be an angel, then, and knock us up a few cheese butters. OK, OK. I realise now I should have voted for Alf Roberts. <laughs> Right. 20p makes two pounds, love it. Three, four, five. It was a five pound note you gave me. I mean, it wasn't a ten, was it? Well, if you don't remember, it was a tenner. Now, go on, it was only a fiver. Oh, darling. How about that, my honest husband? They're not all like him, you know. Yes, I do know, dear. I've got other ways of taking your money. Come and look at the factory shop. Well, if my bar staff leave me enough money by not giving too much change, I might just do that, Mike. Ooh, is that miserable so-and-so. Don't you worry, Jim. <laughs> Right, what's the story on your Jack? Is he better? Hello. <laughs> hey, oh, he's back. Oh, well, uh, it's much the same. Yes, well, tell him from me he'd better get back here fairly smartish, otherwise I'm going to have to find somebody else. I've enough on my plate keeping tabs on bar stuff without toiling up and down cellar steps all day. Hey, now, hey. listen. He will, you know, if I hear your Jack. Well, that's our Jack Swirry. As long as he didn't expect me to keep him in fags and bowls. Any news on your Brian? Uh, no, no, not me. Really. There is something in there. I told you, no, shut up. A quiet word with you ladies about this nuisance in the street. What nuisance? I didn't know anybody were committing one. This sign your boss has put up. Mrs Tilda said it disturbed her all last night. Oh, no, hang on a minute, Percy. I had other things on my mind. It weren't signed so much. How about you, Mrs Duckworth? We can't have anything interfering with your beauty sleep, now can we? I mean, you need all you can get. Very funny. Look, I don't know what you're whittering on about. All right, ladies. Now, I know you're in an awkward position. It's more than your job's worth to go against your boss. But a nod's as good as a wink, so leave it with me. Do you know, Sam? I think he's potty. <laughs> <laughs> you changed, look, thanks. What's up with Ali? He keeps giving me funny looks. I'm looking at you, lovey. Looking at the till. Eh? He doesn't trust us, does he? He thinks we're diddling him. He thinks we're a couple of thieves. <laughs> should be, but I'm going to have to come round to see how you were. Won't you get into trouble? Oh, who cares? I thought you'd be Mam and Alan Bradley. He's dropping her off here so that she can look after the baby. Well, you've still gone in with it, are you? This uh, meeting Alan fixed up with Brian? Oh, yeah, I'll be there. Be a nice surprise for Brian, won't it? I think you should call the police. No. I've told Ivy I won't. Tell with Ivy. What about Nicky? Brian won't hurt Nicky. I'm sure of that. In fact, that's what's kept me saying this last couple of days, knowing that Brian does love Nicky. He won't hurt him. It's only me he wants to hurt. Yeah, well, he wants shooting for what he's doing to you. <sighs> Have you had anything to eat today? I don't feel like anything. Gail, you've got to eat. I'll go and make you something. I'm all right, Jeff. I'm all right. Thanks for coming. But I am okay. My mum will be here any minute. And I'd feel a lot better if you get back to work. Yeah, you sure? Positive. Come back tonight, eh? Maybe by then I'll have Nicky back. You know, it's time you're here again. I've been worrying. Ah, that'll be him now. Well, I've lost it away on his own out here. Give it a rest, man. This is Alan Bradley. Aye, it is. You ought to have more Jesus. consideration. All these knows is ship workers trying to get their heads down. See you later, Alan. Yeah, There's I'll far too calm. much of that these days. What? People blasting on their horns, playing their wirelesses, belting that out and flashing lights. Like they sign a ball wins. Public nuisance. Flashing on and off all night, it were. Emily Bishop never got a wink. Neither did Ivy Tilsley, no beer of with and they don't complain, you see, because they all work for him. Yeah, well, that's the 11th commandment, isn't it? Thou shalt not mither the boss. 
Well, when you were at the council around here, it'd, it'd have been all right. You could have come and had a quiet word with you. You'd have sorted ball without and no names, no back drill. Ah, well, yeah, but it's not my concern anymore, is it? You know, sorting folk out. No, oh, more's the pity because you were good at it. Yeah, well, it's dangerous. You don't know where to start, you see. Planning permission. That's where they start checking. Has he got the permission? Then you go on from there. But Deirdre, she's still wet behind the ears, you see. Ah, somebody ought to tell her. Yeah. What time do you say it meet, um... Six o'clock. We ought to be going off now, you know. She's still asleep, Mum, but I think she'll be waking up, so I've, I've got a feed already Don't for her. Don't worry, I know what to do. More to the point, do you know what to do? How do you mean? If and when you see Brian. Oh. I mean, it's no good appealing to his better nature, because we all know he hasn't got one. So it'll be down to you, won't it? Me? Well, to grab hold of him, you'll probably have to thump him one and all. You what? Man, look, just leave it, will you? Look, it, it's all right, Alan. I don't expect you to do anything like that. I don't want any violence or well, anything like that. I'm glad to hear it. All I want is the chance to talk to Brian. Oh, come on, I keep telling you, talking will do no good. I've said all along you should have got the police in. Come on, love, we ought to be going. I mean, it is the rush hour, you know, and there's bound to be hold-ups on the motorway. Yeah, I mean, all we right. don't want to miss him, do we? No, I... That's if he turns up, of course. Come here. Come on. How would you like a real good feed, eh? Eggs, bacon, chips and beans the lot? Yeah! Okay, then. You'll have to get your mum to bring you in, see what we've got in your size. Yeah, OK. What's this? I was just saying you should bring Trace into the factory shop. Special discount, I assume. Mm -hmm. Oh, I dare say we can work something out. Oh, oh that was good. Yes. What was that tea time, wasn't it? Oh, hello. Oh, Councillor Mrs Barlow, uh, just a woman I wanted to see. Or should I say persons, because uh, some of you persons get touchy about being called women, don't you? Is uh, there something I can do for you, Percy? Well, it's more the other way around. I came to tip you the wink, you know. You might be getting one or two complaints. Oh, about what? Well, I'm sure Mrs Baldwin here will take this in the right spirit. It's uh, it's about this sign your husband's put up, you know, this electric thing. It seemed it was flashing on and off all night, you know, thereby causing nuisance to the adjacent residents. Yes, well, the time switch is a bit wonky, you see, so I might getting it sorted out. Oh, you see, people have started asking, did he have council permission? I just thought I'd better brief you, councillor, so you know what the position is when people come seeking you. Ah, oh, would Mike need council permission to put a sign up? Well, that's one for the experts, really. I the councillor here, you know. Anyway, I'll say good evening. Oh, doesn't he just love staring at it? He's really enjoying himself. Would Mike need council permission, dear? Oh, I don't know. Well, if he did, I'm sure he's got it. Well, I hope so, love. Otherwise, the whole purse is going to have a field day. Sure, this is the place. It's nearly ten past six. Yeah, this is the place, all right. Maybe he's late, eh? Maybe he's not coming. He's got to come. I think I'll uh, get out and take a look around. Shall I come? No, I want to talk to him first. You keep your head down. I don't want you frightening him. All right? I won't be long. Yep. 
have to go across the bridge to the other side of the motorway. Can't I come? No. I want you to wait here. Read your comic, I won't be long. And Nikki, don't move, right? Don't get out of the van. Okay, Dad. Good lad. I won't be long. Lager. Oh, a bottle of lager for Ivy, then loving a pint of bitter. Oh, better make that a half. <laughs> right, Alan. Oh, no point in mopping about at home, is there? I mean, you might as well be here having a drink and a bit of company. Well, it's very good of you, Alan. They'll, they'll, they'll about me nearly there now, won't they? Ah, just about. Yeah. Right. Keep the chair. Oh, thanks. Shall we go through there? Hello, love. <laughs> My sign is no business of Percy Sutton. Yes, well, he thinks everything round here is his business. <laughs> Actually, that might be my fault, I'm afraid. I did happen to mention in his hearing about the sign keeping me awake last night, and it kept switching on and off, like I told you. Yeah, well, well that's all in hand. All right. <laughs> That's what started Mr. Sugden off, I'm afraid. Oh, he keeps going on about council business. So I told him that he would have got any permission that was necessary. Ah, oh, there's a loyal wife for you. Did you get permission? <laughs> eh? Uh, well, no, of course not. Oh, man. I haven't got time to waste filling in forms about something and nothing. I've got a business to run, right? And if Percy Sugden to mind his own business and not mine, we'd all be all right. <laughs> My stands were just the same, you know. Your stands were? He's back. Used to give him jib sometimes. Oh, uh, when they were working off in same as our Jack. <laughs> yeah, well, your Jack wants to watch himself. Cos my lad over there wouldn't think twice about getting shut of him, especially if I had somebody else lined up. Listen, if I had somebody else lined up, I'd get shut of him. Betty? Yes, love? Give us some tens, love, oh, will you? OK, there you are, my lovely. Thanks. Okay. Betty. Yeah? What? What was all that? What? <coughs> well, she didn't buy a drink, did she? She wanted change. Change? Mm. They can get change when they buy drinks. I'm sick of this. Every time I go near that till, I can feel your beady little eyes boring holes in the back of my neck. Look, I could do without all this. I've worked here for years, and I've always been trusted. And I won't work anywhere where I'm not being now, trusted. Now, look, have I said I didn't trust you? Oh. Hey, just a minute, where are you going? I'm going home. You can reckon up the wages you owe me. I'll call in tomorrow for them. And that's the last time you'll see me, because I'm finished. Walking out on a damn good job. Oh, not in my opinion. It used to be a good job. Till you came, Charlo. Oh, Betty Angle. Listen, I've had it with him. All the best. Oh, I just talk to our very sensitive. I mean, I want to see Nicky back with his mum, you know that, but I want to see our brain and all. He must be upset. He must have been, well, desperate. He's not a bad lad, is he? Oh, no, I know that. No, oh, he's been hurt, you know, about what's happened between him and Gail. And especially little Nicky. He's been more hurt than he's ever let on, you know, I thought, God knows, I'm worried sick he'll do something like daft. He's where you won't get him. Please, Ryan, let me take him home with me, please. No, it's you and your boyfriend. Forget it. You'll never have him. Brian, wait! Get away! Brian! He's Go gone on. over the bridge! Come on. in the wrong way.
If he thinks he's going to get her back that easy, he's got another thing coming. Eh? Gilroy, on the phone. If he's trying to soft soap Betty into coming back. He isn't. He's getting the food organised, isn't he? I reckon when Betty walked out of here, it was for keeps as far as he's concerned. Yeah, well, let's face it. It's been on the cards ever since he took over. I mean, she's hardly gone out of her way to put the welcome mat out, has she? Oh, no, she hasn't. But he's not the easiest fella to get on with, you know. Oh, it depends how you handle him. Now, you've got to humour a fella like Alec Gilroy. Do that and you can twist him round your little finger. Right, that's a start, I suppose. I've doubled the pie order and laid on extra balm cakes. Should be able to make do with that for the time being, until I can get something more permanent fixed up to her. So, as soon as you like, you can nip round to uh, Alf Roberts, pick up the ham and cheese and stuff. I've, I've come to a special arrangement with him for the time being. Me? Well, certainly you. I'm, I'm not going to do the balm cakes myself, am I? Mrs. Ogden will give you a hand. I'm sure she's buttered more than a fair share of balm cakes in her time. Hey, hang on. I've got my own work to do, haven't I? Well, we all have, Hilda. But sitting round here gossiping isn't going to get it done any quicker, is it? So, come on. Chop, chop. No, no, just a minute. I've got to be at Mrs. Lowther's at half past eleven, you know. Well, then you better get your skates on. Look, look, why don't you let me finish that? You go and get your head down for half an hour. I don't hour. want to, ma'am. I couldn't get off last night. I'm hardly likely to get off in broad daylight, am well, I? There's nothing you can do, no, Lord. I know there isn't, ma'am. That's the trouble. I feel so helpless. Oh, ma'am, I know you mean well. But you didn't see Nicky, did you? Looking at me. Waving at me. He wanted me. I know he did. There's nothing I could do about it. I just had to watch him being driven off like that. I kept seeing his little face. Oh, no. Well, I'll go. No, I'll go. All right, now. Mrs. Tilson. Have you heard anything? No, we haven't, not yet. May I come in? Oh, I'm sorry. And to be quite frank, Mrs. Tilsley, you're not exactly helping, are you? Not playing the sort of games you were playing last night. Hey, 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 hang on a minute. I'm sorry, I know she's upset, but it's got to be said. If she'd have told us about this meeting she'd arranged with her husband, well, the chances are would have had young Nicky back home by I now. I only did what I thought was best. You do want this lad of yours back, don't you? What sort of a question's that? So leave us to decide what's best. Now... Has your husband made any further attempt to contact you since last night? No. Well, if he does get in touch again, you get on that phone to us immediately, right? She will, I promise. I said, right? Look, I know she may have made a mistake not telling you about Brian. There's but... no may about it, she did. Well, going on about it's not helping It is, if it helps Gail to understand the importance of getting in touch with this immediately she hears anything further from her husband. Because if you don't, well, you're wasting your time and you're wasting ours. Have you no idea at all where they might be? No. To be honest, we haven't. But we at least know that no harm has come to the lad. We know which direction they drove off in, and we know that they're still in the same vehicle. It should only be a matter of time. Is that the best you can do? Sorry, mate. I'm not doing myself no favours, neither. Not doing me any, that's for sure. They're not easy to shift, you know, those small commercials. Not with that kind of mileage on the clock. That engine's good for another hundred thou. I know what I'm talking about and all. I'm oh, sorry, mate. That's the best I can do. Take it and leave it. I'll be with you in a minute. So what do you reckon? I want to go home. Now, come on. We've a lot to do yet, you and me. You're enjoying yourself, aren't you? Why couldn't Mum come? She wanted to. Your Mum's all right, isn't she? And she's got baby Sarah and Granny Audrey and Granny Ivy. And Jeff. Yes, them and all. Come on, let's get the bags out the van. I don't want to be stuck here all day. I know he's my son, Al, but if only I could get my hands on him right now. Look, love, there's no point in getting yourself in a state that doesn't do nobody no good. I know that. But what the ex you think he's playing at, that's what I'd like to know. Well, that's what we'd all like to know, love. Yeah, just three pounds, please. Mm. 
Hello. Hello, Alan. Uh, Rachel asked me to drop that in, Alf. Uh, I'll come and pick him up later, OK? Ah, of course, Chris. Don't suppose there's been any more news, has there? Not a word. If only I'd gone to the police in the first place, you know. Told them we'd been in touch. Arranged a meeting or something like that. If only a lot of things, mate. Look, there's no point in blaming yourself. You did what you thought you had to do at the time. All we can do now is wait and see if the police come up with something. That's all we can do. Wait and hope. And pray, Alf. Aye, love. That and all. Many happy returns of the day. Oh, hi. <laughs> Look, I'm sorry about this card. I had it in the car all yesterday and I clean forgot to post it. Oh, thank you. And don't eat them all at once. Thank you very much. Uh, listen, I'm sorry I can't ask you to dinner. Meal's been taking me out. Well, I can't stop. I just popped in to give you those. Oh, that's lovely. I, um, I just saw Percy Sutton as I came across the road. He's not been here, is he? <laughs> no, thank goodness. At least I've been spared that on my birthday. <laughs> Honestly, all this fuss over that flipping sign of yours. <sighs> the way Mike and I see it. Yeah, well, you know what Percy's like. Gets his teeth into something. He's like a terrier with a bone. He's an interfering fool. Oh. I mean, that sign isn't a problem now. And I doubt if there's been more than three cars down the road all morning. No, oh, not according to Percy. You've got lights flashing on and off all night fit to put Blackpool illuminations to shame. And our street has been turned into another spaghetti junction because of your shop. Don't remind me. Anyway, he's not been near today, so maybe even he's getting fed up with it. Yeah, well, let's hope so for all our sakes. Well, you're not bothered about what Percy has to say, are you? Well, no, not now, but if he carries on the way he has been doing, well, he could make things a bit tricky. Oh, could cool. Well, Mike didn't apply for planning permission for the sign. He didn't? Well, he didn't think it was worth it, did he? So let's just hope that Percy Sugden gets his teeth into something else, and quick, because if he doesn't... Well, I thought you ought to know. You must have some sympathy for him. He is your son. I know he is, Vera. But you've not seen Gail, have you, and what he's doing to her? Heaven knows what our little Nick is making of it all. Honest, if anybody had told me when they got wed that it'd end up like this, I'd have had them certified. Well, I'm going to get something to eat if you're not. My belly's rumbling like a blast furnace. Are you having a drink? No, I don't think so. Hey, I'll tell you what, why don't we go back home now and make some? I mean, they've only got salmis here, haven't they? I could do them for lunch in a couple of minutes, though. Yeah, you're right, kid. Come on. Flaming, eh? Well, you're right. Only just. What was that? A chip. Oh. Is, uh, is something the matter, ladies? The flaming wellies. Well, Do you know, you want to thank your lucky stars you're not faced with hefty bill for damages on your hands. I'm sorry, I'm not with you. No, and I nearly won't we either. <laughs> on account of that? <laughs> well, aren't you the smart one, eh? Well, no, I mean, where did it come from? Well, I don't know where it came from, but I know where it ended up. Under that table there. Yeah, and there's half a state kidney pie under there, I know. So while you're looking for a replacement for Betty Turpin, I suggest you do yourself a favour and get your clean a new pair of specs. <laughs> Here. Oh, come on, you. Ooh. And what's where you're treading? You don't know what's lying around. What was all that about? When Hilda comes in, tell her I want a word with her in the back, will you? <laughs> Hey, Al, I knew there was something I'd forgot. Slice peaches, love. Oh, to the side, dear. OK, go. Oh, hello, Hilda. Oh, it's you. Oh, thanks very much. Nice to see you as well. Well, what do you expect? Walking out and dropping us in it like that. Dropping you in it? Me and Gloria. We had to do all the sandwiches and that for dinner. You're fool enough to do it. Not got much choice, have we? Not till you see sense and come back. No way, not while Alec Gilroy's running the show. By the looks of it, it's going to be a long time. No, love it. If you're quite happy for having walking all over, it's your problem. But me, I'm well out of it. Well, I'm very sorry, Percy. It's not to do with me. Well, it's got something to do with somebody. You just can't go around making a nuisance of yourself to the detriment of others. Lights flashing on and off, cars up and down all day. It's like the flipping M6. Isn't that right, Mrs Turpin? <laughs> Nay, don't go dragging me into it. I don't live round here. That's from today, I don't work round here. She'll tell you, won't you, Mrs Ogden? 42, please. Oh, the nuisance being caused by the shop that Mike Baldwin's open. Lights flashing on and off. Ah, cars running up and down like M6. Ah, exactly. I can't say I've noticed. Of course you've noticed. You must have done. Now, come on, Percy. I think you've made your point. If you've any complaints, go to dear Rivalo. I've told you, she's your counsellor now. I have done, and what good's it done me? Look, have I got to stand here all day, or what? I've got work to do when I get home, you know? Yeah, me and all, so I'll leave you to it. Ah. Sorry, love. Right, Hilda. I'm sorry, Percy. Hey, 
I should think twice about before going in there. Oh, I do, love, but I can't get my bread cheaper anywhere else. <laughs> Just the person I wanted to see. What are you doing about this factory nonsense? What about it? Well, well what, what are you doing about it? That's... Looking into it, I've told you. And what does that mean? Well, I should have thought that was perfectly obvious, wouldn't you, Al? Oh, they don't drag me into this. Well, exactly is it you're looking into, then? The nuisance being caused by this factory shop to the innocent residents of this neighbourhood, that's what. Look, there was a slight problem with the time switch on the first night, which has since been put right, and you can count the extra cars down here on one hand. That's got nothing to do with it. I don't know what the council were thinking about in the first place, giving permission. Yes. Well, as I said, Percy, I'm looking into it. As soon as I've got something to tell you, I will. Now, I can't do any better than that. Excuse me, Eldra, I'm in a bit of a rush. Of course, I don't suppose it makes it any easier with him being your son-in-law, so to speak, by marriage. Like. Now, now, I'm that is a bit below the belt, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure that dear is well aware that as a counsellor, she's got to look at the, the whole area as a whole without fear and a favour. Am I right, Deirdre? Oh, yeah. Right. Oh, where? Uh, you wanted to see me, I believe. Gloria dropped a note in on her way home. Yes, that's right. I did. Sit down, Hilda. Oh, thank you. If you were thinking of offering me a cup of tea... I wasn't. Oh, I see. So what's up? I'll tell you what's up. I had Vera Duckworth down on me like a ton of bricks at dinner time because she happened to slip on a chip. A chip? That's right. A chip. And there was half a steak and kidney pie and goodness knows what else under that table. Now, I'm telling you, it could have been very nasty if she'd done herself an injury. Nasty for her, and even nastier for me. Well, I don't see what that's got to do with me. You don't? Well, you're supposed to be the cleaner round here. Oh, I see. I'm supposed to be here 24 hours a day now, am I? Running round with me just pan and brush every time somebody drops a crumb? Uh, no, you're not. But you are expected to do the job you're paid for. I mean, that chip and all that other rubbish must have been there from yesterday because we haven't had chips since Betty left. Hmm. So you reckon I'm not doing my job properly, do you? Well, you didn't this morning, did you? And whose fault was that? Well, don't look at me. Well, you were the one that told me to get in the back and help Gloria with the barn cakes, and I can't be in two places at once. And if you're thinking of asking me to put more hours in, you can forget it. I wasn't. I'd be quite happy if you worked the hours you paid for, instead of supping tea and gassing half the morning. Oh, I see. So that's the way it is. Well, by heck. I thought Mrs Walker were our taskmaster, but I'll give her one thing. She was fair. <laughs> look, Hilda. I can't afford to carry passengers. No, well, you won't have to, will you? Not from now on. Cos you can keep your rotten job. Eh? I know I'm not up to much in your book, but I do have my pride. And you can send me money round when you've worked out how much you owe me. Hilda! Hilda! <laughs> Hello, love. Uh, all on your own, sir? Ah, Sally's gone out with some orders. How are things at Gales? <laughs> How'd you expect? No news. No, a dicky bird, no. What are you doing here, then? Oh, I just had to get out for half an hour. Well, is that wise? Leaving Gail by herself, I mean. Well, if I hadn't, one of us would have been up for murder. I mean, we've done that, but get on each other's nerves ever since this morning. Oh, I don't know. It's all this waiting, not knowing. Every time the phone rings, she jumps out of her skin. I'm telling you, Alf, if she ever catches up with that Brian, she should chuck the bucket to him, abduction, kidnapping the lot. Now, what good will that do? Come on, love, it's only what he deserves. I mean, I'll be out putting up to strangling with my own bare hands. Look, love, I think I know how you feel. Oh. Honest, I do. <sighs> but getting in a state, not, it's not going to help anybody, is it? Least of all, Gail. We've just got to wait and hope. Hope? Hope that Brian sees sense, sees where it's going, that he can't go on running forever. I mean, it doesn't matter how he started out, whatever caused him to do it, he can't go on running forever, can he? Hey, up. Who's the right Bobby Dazzler, then? Can we go home now? Look, son. I know you're missing your mum, but she needs a bit of a rest right now. It's not long since she brought baby Sarah home, is it? She takes up all the time, doesn't she? She hasn't got the time to spend with you like she used to have. She still loves him, though, doesn't she? Yes, of course she does. We both do very much. But at the moment, well, I've got a lot more time to spend with you than she has. And I can give you things, and I can do things with you that she can't. That's why you and me are together like this. Because you and me are going to have the best holiday we've ever had. We're going to do things that we've always wanted to do, like fishing, and sailing, and swimming, and playing on the beach. Just the two of us. I'm hungry. You know something, soldier? You're not the only one! <laughs> right. How does fish and chips grab you? Not again. Well, all right, then. A nice big juicy burger. Yeah. Come on, then. Let's get stoked up.
We're going to have to keep our strength up, aren't we, if we're going to do all those things I've just told you about. We're going to have a lot to tell Darren. You certainly are, Tiger. How much longer are you going to be on that table? I've nearly finished. Well, finish it after tea. I want to go to Debbie's after tea. Your homework's more important than going to Debbie's. That's why I want to finish it now. Well, I want the table. I could finish it in my room, I suppose. You could have done it all in your room, why didn't you? There were no chocolates in my room, oh, were there? Oh, you haven't. I haven't had that many. One, I said. Now, come on, off you go. And if you can't eat your tea, there'll be serious trouble, young lady. I will. Hi. Hi, Faithy. Hi. Hi. And if you're going to say anything about tea not being on the table, take it up with Trace. She's been harder to shift than paint. Oh, well, I can do with about ten minutes, anyway. Uh, I just saw Baldwin on the way in. Oh? You didn't exactly give the impression of someone who's been torn up a strip by my wife. Uh, no, well, he wouldn't. I haven't got round to seeing him yet. Well, you're going to have to sooner or later, love, and I would have thought sooner the better. Well... There's no harm in hanging on, letting the dust settle. Won't just go away, you know. I mean, Percy Sugden's not going to let you off the hook that easily. Not with Alf on the sidelines, just waiting for you to fall flat on your face. Look, Ken, let's just drop it, shall we? I mean, it's my problem, and I'll handle it my way, all right? Now, uh, tea will be on the table in ten minutes. Yes, yes, I know I promised, but someone's come up. Look, I'll just have to catch your act some other time. Uh, no, no, I, uh, I don't think a private performance would be a good idea. Well, not in your case, I don't. Besides, I like to see my artists working in front of an audience. Alec, I'm is there any chance of a pint? Or shall I go out and come back in half yeah, an hour? I'm coming, I'm coming. Look, I'll, I'll, I'll catch up with you next week. I'll have to go now. I'll see you. Bye. Yes, Alec. A pint, please. I see you're a bit thin on the ground behind the bar again. <laughs> you should have been in half an hour ago. You had to be a contortionist to work behind you. I thought barmaids were ten a penny. Well, good ones aren't, that's for sure. But don't worry, it's all in hand, I assure you. Oh. There we go. Right, Vera. Hey, uh, I know I was mad at dinner, but I didn't mean for it to get sacked. Oh, there wasn't sacked. She packed it in. Oh. <laughs> Looks like our chat were right then. They said heads are drilled. Once you start where things were shaping up since he took over. I don't suppose for one minute there's any connection, is there? You know, your Jack's glass back and uh, laughing Alec moving into that seat. Very unpredictable of that, you know. Our Jack's been a martyr to us for years. Just when you think, you know, it's going to be all right. You're up the creek without a paddle. Yeah, I know the feeling. Same goes for a lot of folk I know and all. <laughs> Hello. 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 Right, so, what are you having, Emily? Hey, uh, hang on a minute. I'm the birthday girl, remember? Uh, yes, but I know what you want. Oh, do you? Yeah. Well, I think I'll have a medium sherry, please, Ken. Just a small one. Ah, that's all you'll be getting if he's paying. <laughs> a small, medium sherry and two vodka and tonics, please, Gloria. I spotted you coming in, so I thought I'd bob over and see how you were going on. Yeah. Going on? You know, about this factory shop business. Well, I've told you, Percy, I am looking into it. You mean you've done nothing? Hang on a minute. These things take time. In the hands of politicians, that's for sure. I mean, they keep popping you off and popping you off, hoping you'll get fed up and forget all about it. But that's not for me, thank you very much. Look, Percy, I will get onto them at the town hall first thing tomorrow, all right? But just at the moment, I'm trying to have a quiet drink with my husband. Right, do that. But I'm telling you, if you don't go to that town hall tomorrow, I will. Has she settled? She'll not be long. Oh, bless her. I think I'd have gone round the bend by now if it hadn't been for her. Why, Ivy? Why did he do it? Was it to get at me? Sarah Louise? I don't know, girl, and that's the honest truth. I, it's a question I've asked myself a dozen times. The only thing I can think is the way our Brian saw it, well, Nicky was the only person he got left in the world. What did he hope to achieve? Well, he just wanted to be with him, didn't he? I don't suppose he thought any further than that. How long for, Ivy? A few days? A few weeks? Forever? I don't know, Gail, honest. But I'll tell you something, wherever Nicky is, he'll be all right. Cos our Brian thinks the world of that kid. He wouldn't harm hair of his head. No. No, I don't believe he would. But if he cares that much for him, I mean, really cares, why doesn't he bring him home, where he belongs? That's only a question our brain can answer for himself, isn't it? Right. Hello, Hi. Hi. 
Okay, Jack. Come in. Oh, Mrs. Tilsley. Jack. Any news? Nothing, no. Police haven't been in touch. Brian haven't been in touch again. Nothing. I'm sorry. Well, you look fagged out. <laughs> it's beginning to catch up with me. Right, yeah, come on, take the weight off your feet. Come on, sit down. I'll go and put the kettle on. And I don't expect you've had any tea, neither. No. Well, well I wanted to get her something. I, I don't I... feel like anything. I don't feel like anything now. I'll nip out and get her Chinese Jeff, or something later. I don't later. want anything, honest. Gail, you've got to eat. You've got to look after yourself, haven't you? You've got baby Sarah to think of and all, you know. And you're not going to be much use to Nicky or anybody else when he comes back if you let yourself go, are you? Look, I think I'd better be off. Stop and have a cup of tea, Ivy. Uh, no, no, thanks just the same. If I drink any more, I'll probably burst. You will be all right, won't you? I will be now, Jeff, see you. He's been very good to me, Ivy. Yes, I can see that. I'm just sorry it's taken something like this to make me see your point of view. If you hear anything. I'll be in touch. Bye-bye, Ivy. Bye. All set. Are we really going on a big boat? Yes, we are. You've never been on a big boat before, have you? It's great. You know, it's got cuffs and shocks, the lot. Yeah. Look. Right, you set? Yeah. Right then. This time tomorrow, we'll be in another country. there, soldier. Only a few more minutes now. It's a real big ship, you know, with a proper captain in that. Be a proper sailor yourself, won't you? Sailing on a big ship. Both will. We'll get something to eat on it, and then before we know it, we'll be in Ireland. They call it Emerald Dales, you know. You know, because it's so green and beautiful. Lots of woods and fields to play in. Lots of space. Nobody to bother us. It's going to be great, isn't it? Eh? You all right back there, soldier? Yeah, that's a good lad. A life on the ocean waves, where we're going to be. La 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 la, la 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 la. A life on the ocean waves. to drinking of a morning, have we? Purely medicinal. Whiskey improves the circulation. It's a well-known fact. And cigarettes stop it stone dead, so you're wasting your time, aren't you? You haven't done a stroke this morning. I've got up, eaten me muesli, faced the world. It's not bad for the first hour. I suppose you're expecting me to clear this mess up? Well, I've got one or two appointments this morning. Have you? I can hardly go to them with fluff on my suit and my hands all rough and red now, can I? Got a position to keep up, darling. You said exactly the same thing yesterday morning, so I have to do all the cleaning. Oh, it's only temporary, Gloria, till I can replace Hilda. Yeah, you said that yesterday and all, so... You know what I brought you? Here. Now, this'll keep your suit clean. And as for your hands, you can wear some rubber gloves. You'll find a pair of Hilda's in the kitchen. Oh, and, uh, talking of Hilda, I think you should ask her to come back. 
She walked out on us. She left us in the lurch. I know, but you're forgetting one thing. She is cheap. You look like a bug in that apron. You're not indispensable, you know, darling. Oh, I am, Alec, believe you me. Oh, and by the way, I'll take the money for the apron out the till. No, ma'am. There's no news. Postman's been and gone. Nobody knows better than me how long it's been. I've been racking my brains as to where they could have got to. The police are getting in touch with me, wouldn't they? If they knew anything. I know how you feel, ma'am. But we're just going to have to be patient and wait. Brian's got to surface sooner or later, so we're just going to have to be patient. No, I'm not all right, ma'am. I'm as well as can be expected. There's somebody at the door. You know who it is. I'm not psychic, am I? Look, I'll be in touch if there's any news. Bye. Hello. It's you. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, any news? No. Oh, I was just on my way to a job. I didn't know whether it's best to ring up or call round or, or what. But I couldn't have gone all day without... Every Everybody wants the latest news, Jeff. I understand that. It's just every time there's a knock at that door, every time the phone goes, I think it's them. And it never is. They'll be back, Gail. If, if not today, then tomorrow they will. I know that, Jeff. I've just told me ma'am that, haven't I? Will you get it, Jeff? Hello. Jeff Singleton. No, no, this is uh, nothing fresh. Well, yeah, she's just here. It's uh, Mrs. Tilsley. Ivy? My voice. Oh, and well, I've just got a bit of a cold or something. All these sleepless nights. So what's on your agenda today? Well, I think you know damn well what's at the top of it. Oh, yeah, of course, the uh, Baldwin's casual controversy. Baldwin's casual controversy? It isn't a controversy, it's a situation. <laughs> but you are going to do something about his giant electric sign. And it isn't giant, it's tiny. Well, compared to some, anyway. Oh, I'm going to have to do something about it, aren't I? I mean, Percy soaked in, for one, isn't going to let it drop. What? What are you going to do? Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to check to see if he did need planning permission. I mean, you never know. He might not have needed it. End of situation. <laughs> I think you know very well he needed it. And you know that he knew he needed it. And you, knowing that he knew, certainly has the makings of a controversy. Yeah, wouldn't you just love it if there was one? <laughs> it's none of my business. It's between the councillor for the ward and the transgressor of the local bylaws, if that's what he is. See you later. See? I thought it was a big boat. Well, it has to be, on it? Got all these cars in and that. Do you know what they call the back of a ship? It's a stern on the front of the bar. Do you know I once fancied joining the Navy? Your grandma Tilsley wouldn't let me. When are we going to go on the ship? A few minutes now, I should think. I don't want to go on it. Of course you do. Fantastic on a ship, you'll see. I don't want to go on it. There's nothing to be frightened of. Look, you can see for yourself, it's a big ship. 
You'll hardly know you're sailing on sea. It's just like being on dry land. Anyway, before you know it, we'll be in Ireland. Oh, you titchy sea, you know, the Irish sea. So you're okay, soldier? But none of your mates have been on a big ship. And I bet they'd jump with the chance if they could. I don't want to go on your ship. I want to go home. I want to go home to Mum. Don't you want to have a fantastic time, Mickey? Like we have done so far. And just you and me, two mates together. We have had a fantastic time, haven't we, soldier? Flaking please. I don't think they're trying to find them. Too busy summons in motorists. No, that's not fair, look. Well. They're doing the best they can. Listen, why don't you go home, make yourself a nice cup of tea, and try and have a bit of a rest? A rest? Oh, oh come on, I can't rest. I'll go and sweep the stone. Yeah. Now. Poor Mrs. Roberts, she can understand her being worried. I'll kill you, Tilsey, if I get my hands on. He's caused all this, you know, and for why? Because he wasn't big enough to forgive Gail one mistake. Don't you ever be that puffed up with pride, because it doesn't just sour your own life, it sours everybody else's as well. Oh, after you, Hilda. Well, thanks very much. Uh, where do you keep your vinegar off? Oh, it's bottom left, Mrs. Ogden. Oh. Hey, it's good vinegar, that, I know. Cool, eh? Hey? Does Alf Roberts pay you extra for praising his goods? No, does he, eh? No, I didn't think he would. He'd skin a flea and then sell it to Vest with Alf Roberts. <laughs> have you tried this chutney, Hilda? No, I can't say I have. Oh, I think I will. You know how some folk have a sweet tooth. I've got what they call a chutney tooth. <laughs> <laughs> Fancy. Well, then, um, how are you coping at the Rovers, then? Who's doing the cleaning? Or have you had to give the muck a rent book? Well, as a matter of fact, we're coping very well, Gloria and me. We're sharing the work, you know. And though I do say it myself, the place is glowing. In fact, people have commented. Well, I'll There you go. Doesn't like the coming in. I don't know what you're so worried about. Deirdre's not going to grass on us. No way. I don't think she's got any alternatives. I mean, we've stuck two fingers up at her regulations. Her <laughs> regulations? Council regulations. And she's a councillor. She's Deirdre, and I'm certain she's not going to shop us. Oh, shop you, you mean, don't you? All right, shop me then. What, for old time's sake? Yeah, well, if you want my opinion, I don't think you know the lady. Mm -hmm. Do you want a bet? <laughs> Hello, Hilda. I thought you were avoiding this place. Well, him anyway. Well, if I didn't come in here for a drink, I'd be cutting off my nose to spite me face, wouldn't I? A light out, please. <laughs> Well, I must say I'm surprised for about how tidy this place is. Hilda, it's nice to see you. Nice. You haven't paid for that drink, have you? Uh, only just. Oh, pity. She's missing us, you know, Gloria. <clears throat> Aren't you, Hilda? Not especially, no. Oh, you can't fool me. Customer wants serving, Gloria. Good elf. Good elf. Pass muster, do we? Anything your expert eye can fault, or do you agree it's pretty ship shape? It's not bad, Mouse. Well, I've always said keeping things neat and tidy is hardly a job. I mean, God knows why housewives make such a fuss about it. Dog be a brush tied to its tail could do it. Oh, you think so, do you? Well, I mean, there's your proof. I think you were what you call a superfluity, Hilda. Brian's not turned up, has he? Well, as far as I know. Mess, isn't it? I feel sorry for poor Gail, what she must be going through. Yeah. Mind you, can't be much fun for you trying to run that garage on your own. Oh, I'm managing to struggle today. Just. It goes on for much longer, though. It's not to affect the business. But they've got to turn work down. What must have got into Brian? I mean, I always thought he was a very stable sort of lad. Oh, he's got a foul temper. He always has a. Who's this, Sarah Louise? Somebody selling something? All right, I'm coming. He'd never been away. 
You rotten sod. What do you think you're playing at, eh? Taking my son away from me? Well, come on, Brian. Tell me. Because I don't understand how you could do it. Four days you had him. Four days of hell worrying myself sick. Do you hate me that much? Didn't do it because I hate then you. Then why? Why did you take my son away from me? He's my son as well. Never taken him away from you. I've never even threatened. I just wanted to be with him. Nobody was stopping you from being with well, him. Look like that to me. Oh, I see. Jeff. No, not Jeff. Well, what then? Come on, Brian, tell me. I have a right to know after what you put me through. And Nicky. He's come to no harm. Maybe not. So why did you bring him back? He wanted to come home. You didn't want to bring him home. I'm talking to you, Brian. I don't know what I want. All right? I don't know what I want. Pathetic. No explanation. Don't know what you want. Where are you going? Does it matter? It might not matter to me, but it certainly matters to the police. The police? What's it got to do with the police? I reported it. Reported what? I reported Nicky missing. He wasn't missing. He was with me, his dad. He was missing. You're taking him without asking me if you could. Without telling me. So as far as I was concerned, he was missing, so I reported it. The police have gone to a lot of trouble trying to find you, Brian. So if I were you, I'd go and find them before they come for you. Tell them what you were playing at. Explain to them why you kidnapped my son. I didn't kidnap him. How can you kidnap your own you son? You took him away from me, Brian. As far as I'm concerned, there's no difference. I know you've just walked in, shattered from a hard day's shopping, but uh, have you got a minute? Ah, uh, yes, I think so. You'd better come in. Oh, come. You can in. No, why? No reason. Excuse me a sec, I'll just get rid of these bags. You're right. Right, what can I do for you? Well, Susan reckons you're going to grass on us. Grass? Reporters for putting up that sign. You should have got planning permission, Mike. Oh, I know. Red tape. I mean, all that fuss about me putting up a little sign on my own building. And what harm's it going to do anyone? None. Couldn't we come to some uh, arrangement between ourselves? How? Oh. Well, you could say that I approached you as my local councillor and asked you to suss it out for me. You know, the planning bit. And you forgot. Skipped your mind. And I thought, getting no come back from you, it was uh, okay to go ahead. And, uh... Well, if you just flattered your eyelashes at the uh, chairman of the committee or whoever, you know, give him the I'm just a silly little woman bit and say it'd be very embarrassing for you if I got the aggro over the sign. Oh, come on. <laughs> Deirdre, I don't have to tell you. You could do it in your sleep. You, uh, think I'm good at fluttering my eyelashes, do you? Yes, I do. Being on the receiving end of them, as I was once, and they are very flutterable eyelashes. Are they now? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, I can't take my eyes off him. Number C. He's not going to disappear in a puff of smoke, you know. Oh, don't say that. No, don't. How did our brain look there? He looked tired, Ivy. Well, Nick, he looks fine. He's all sunburnt and healthy. I don't think he's been under quite the same strain. Loose fault, huh? I'm not defending him, ma'am. Nobody can defend him after what he did, Gail. What do you think police will do? I honestly don't know. They'd never send him to prison, would they? He deserves it. Gail. I don't know, Ivy. It's like my mum says. Nicky's none the worse, is he? He'd never have harmed him, Gail, you know that. He loves his space, man. Look, Madge, he should do it. Cast a fortune, didn't it, Ivy? <laughs> yes, with every penny. Did Brian say why he did it? He said he wanted to be with him. Well, he's got a funny way of going about it. At least I'm not jumping out of my skin every time the door goes. Hello? I know Audrey's here. I saw the car. Your mum's here as well. What do you want? I want to talk to you. 
The police have been on, making sure Nicky's safe. That's what I want to talk about. Nicky? The police. Come in. Brian. Mum? I don't know how you've got the nerve to show your face again here. Hello, Ilda. Honouring us with your presence again? Yes, well, like I say, I've got a perfect right to come in here. After all, it has been me local for 20 odd years. And how long have you worked here? I've been nearly as long. Hey, uh, is it right what he says, Alec Gilroy? Well, what does he say? Well, that you and him are coping without me, keeping on top of the cleaning and that. Well, he's not coping, I am. Oh, he said. I don't care what he said, it's me that's worked to death. Oh, can't you see your way to coming back, Hilda, if only for my sake? Hilda! It's like a magnet to you, this yeah. place, isn't it? Admit it, your life's empty without us. And we miss her, don't we, Gloria? I do. Have you not got a drink, though? Gloria, what are you thinking about? What's it to be, Hilda? On the house. Oh, uh, well, uh, I think I'll have a double pot and lemon, if you don't mind. What, one double pot, Gloria. Come in up. Confidentially, Hilda, strictly entrepreneur, Gloria's not much help on the domestic front. Well, I mean, does she look like she knows one end of a long mop from the other? <laughs> so I was wondering, uh, if you were suffering from withdrawal symptoms, your position here is still open. I'll forgive and forget that you terminated your employment. Now, can an employer be more generous? Yes, well, I'll, um, I'll think about it. I can't wait forever, Hilda. <sighs> One double quote. Yeah. Let me know when you've finished thinking, Hilda. Still, I'll be able to tell, won't I? When you lose that pained look. Sarcastic devil. He's asked me to come back. I know, yeah. Well, of course I am. But not before I've had another double thought out of him, at least. Uh, you weren't born yesterday, were you, Hilda? <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> well, them two should sleep tonight. For the first time in a bit. Hmm? Your mum and Ivy should sleep well tonight. Nicky went down like a log, too. You look tired. Oh, I'm all right. Well, I'm jiggered. So what did the police really have to say, Brian? Not what you told Ivy, obviously. They weren't really bothered. They gave me a good telling off. Said I wasted a lot of the time. Is that all? And that we ought to sort out proper access to Nicky. Put on a proper footing. Go and see our solicitors. I don't think you're likely to pull a stroke like that again, are you? No. Will you give me your word? Yeah. Then I don't think we've any need to drag solicitors into it. Nor do I. Can you tell me yet, Brian, why you did it? Well, I didn't plan it. I just saw you all. You and Nicky, Jeff and the baby, all together. I just felt like I was missing out on everything. Like I was losing out all round. I've never felt so miserable. I think I must have flipped. You just had a row with Liz as well, haven't you? That's finished. The row? Liz. So you didn't know where you were going? Where you were taking Nicky? No. Where did you go? Just roamed around like a couple of gypsies and stopped in the caravan. Did you need the money for? For the garage? Skin, wasn't I? I saw the van in the end and bought that car outside. And after four days, Nicky had had enough. It was an adventure at first. And then he wanted to come home. Yeah. So what are you going to do now, Brian? Go back to Ivy's? No way. She'd want me to, I don't doubt that. I couldn't stand the brave face she'd be putting on it. Well, you've got to have somewhere to live. To sleep? I'll manage. The garage isn't bad this weather in emergency. You can stay here tonight if you want. No. no I'm all right. Well, you're welcome to the spare room. You need a good night's sleep too, Brian. 
You're dead on your feet. We were supposed to be on holiday. That's what I kept telling Nicky. I knew it wasn't a holiday. And so did he in the end. Bring you back in, Brian. I wondered if there's else I could do. Oh, I'm ahead of my schedule. Thanks to you taking Nicky to school. Bet you got one or two peculiar looks. For Pauline there. Yeah. Not that she knows anything. I mean, I haven't been telling them what's been going on. I told the school you'd take Nicky away for a couple of days. Listen, Gail, uh, the reason I didn't go straight to work was... Well, Nicky started acting a bit funny when it came for me to leave him. What way? Well, he wanted me to promise that I'd still be here. Here in this house, when, when he gets back, that we both will be. So what did you say? Well, he had no choice. I said we would be. Okay. Well, just show me face. Uh, I won't get in the way around. And hopefully by then, I'll sort it out my accommodation problem. Yeah. I'll see you tonight, then. Bye. Betty, it's Gloria. Hello. Oh, fine, yeah. How are you? Listen, why don't you come in this morning and have a word with Alec? We'll just have a talk to him, you know, try and sort things out. You're wasting your time there. No, no, he doesn't know I'm ringing you, to be honest. I, I just thought, you know, somebody should do something, not just leave things as they are. You might thank you for meddling, you know that, don't you? What? You mean now, Betty? Well, I can ask him, I suppose. Ask him what? What's she saying? Can you just hold the line a minute, Betty, please? Oh, I bet you said no, didn't she? Hilda, can you just give us a chance, please? Well, I wouldn't come back if I had her money. She still gets a pension on account of her husband, you know. Oh? Um, Alec, there's, uh, there's someone on the phone for you. Oh, right. It, it's not Margot by any chance, is it? Uh, no, it's, um, it's Betty. Betty? Well, I am honoured, aren't I? Not as honoured as you think you are. I rang her. I just thought, you know, if she came over, you could sit down and iron things out between you. I mean, we do need somebody for food, don't we, Alec? We can't carry on with pies and sandwiches forever. Well, perhaps not forever, but for some considerable time, I would have thought. Just have a talk to her, Alec, please. Mm, I'll, I'll talk to anybody, me. Yeah, all right. Tell her she can come in if that's what she wants. Well, no. Well, she won't, you see. Not unless you make the first move. Oh, if she wants a Rolls Royce, send him for her, does she? Or will she settle for being airlifted in, slung under a helicopter? She just wants you to ask her. She's on the phone now. Well, she can put her airs and graces on, can that one? Builder! Oh, please, Alec. For my sake. Deirdre's not in. Council meeting. Oh. So, you like all the rest of them? You don't want me either. Oh, it's not that. No, it's all right. Nobody does. All they want is my wife. Don't answer the phone anymore now. I know it's going to be for her. <laughs> Feeling neglected, are you? Terribly. Oh, I'm very sorry for you. Hey, now, listen. Has she said anything to you about this sign business? You did mention that. What's she going to do, do you know? Not a clue. Oh, I just don't want it to turn into a big issue that's going to set us at one another's throats again. Well, I have no intention of going at anybody's throat or of trying to influence my wife. Mainly because I know I couldn't, anyway. Yeah, well, Mike thinks he's talked her into forgetting the whole thing. Mm, must be clever. But has he? That's what I want to know. Yeah. Yes, what? I'd quite like to know that, too. Let me know if you find out anything, wouldn't you? 
I'll get them for a change, ma'am. Oh, Do you want... go on, uh, gin and tonic and a sandwich or something. Surprise me. Gail, uh, I don't want to interrupt, but um, how's our Nicky? I mean, this business hasn't upset him at all, has it? Well, he was back at school this morning. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Mind you, they're very adaptable at that age, aren't they? Sit yourself down, Ivy. Get to get your drink, won't you, love? Uh, no, I've already got one across the Well, I have house. another one over here, a lager. A lager and a G&T. All right, so it's for a couple of minutes. Guess where Brian spent last night? I was just going to ask, because I've seen no time. At their house? No. Yeah? Oh, my prayers have been answered. Well, she reckons they were in the spare room, so don't stop praying yet. Well, is he staying there, then, or what? She mentioned somewhat about him going back for his tea, yeah, so looks oh. like it. <laughs> You didn't mind me ringing like that, did you? No, of course I didn't, love. Very thoughtful of you. No, I appreciate it, lovey. Good afternoon, Betty. Good afternoon. We'll go through to the back, shall we? Oh, yes. Excuse After me. you. Thank you. She's only just turned up, has she? Yes, she's just this minute arrived, so you needn't worry, Hilda. You haven't missed a thing. Oh, it's to be hoped not the way I've slaved to get back here. So, what have you got to tell me? <laughs> I beg your pardon? Well, I assume you've come to tell me something, only I haven't got all day. We're rather short-staffed. But I thought it was you that was supposed to want to have a talk with me. Was it? Oh, well, let's have a talk, then. I'm trying to manage this pub, Betty. Not entirely out of choice, but because fate happens to have picked me out for special attention and plonked me here. Mm -hmm. Well, all right. But what I need is help and support. The last thing I need is people working against me. Like me, you mean? No, we haven't exactly been pulling in the same direction now, have we? Look, all I want is for things to be as they always have been. And that's all, is it? Well, yeah. Well, I think you're going to be sorely disappointed, Betty, because things don't remain as they've always been. Not here, not anywhere. We're all in a permanent state of flux. Do you want me to come back here or not? <clears throat> well, now, let's not forget that you were the one that walked out. I mean, you weren't sacked Look, for you're, anything. You're not answering my question. Do you want me to come back here or not? You make a very good Lancashire up, Pop Betty. Gloria's been a great pains to remind me of that. But then so do lots of other folk. I mean, you don't exactly hold a monopoly on it. <laughs> I never claimed to. No. Well, like I said, I want somebody to give me that help and support I was talking about. Not Lancashire up out in a hard time. You know, if someone had told my fortune and said I was going to feel as happy as I do today, I would have never believed them. Just show me without your hope, dear. I should be at the cafe. I should be sat here twiddling my thumbs. Never mind the cafe. You should be doing what you are doing. Look, tell them you're going to take a week off. You deserve some time to yourself. Yeah, some time with your family. Things are back to normal now, though, aren't they? Ah, but what is normal, then? All four of you, you mean? Of course she does. That's what being normal means, isn't it, Gail? I mean, Nicky's back. And Brian's back. He is back in Tillow. With his family, where he belongs. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, stop it, will you? And you, Ivy. What? All this lovey-dovey family stuff. How long is it since you were calling Brian all names under the sun? Telling me to get the police on to him. Things have changed since then, haven't they? Yeah, of course they have, Gail. Some things have. But we are still divorced, in case you've forgotten. <coughs> so stop going on that. We've just announced as engagement. Your friend, Mrs. Turpin, would like a word. With me? Yes, only don't make it too long, because I don't want her thinking she can summon the staff of this pub for a chat any time she feels like it. Is uh, everything all right, Mr Gilroy? Oh, I think we're getting things worked out, Hilda, yes. I always find there's nothing like an honest exchange of views. Oh, me and all. <laughs> so, um, that is set on again, is she? I wouldn't work for that man again if he paid me a gold sovereigns. Oh, Betty. Yeah, to tell you the truth, I don't think he wants me to. Well... I know he doesn't. He more or less said so. I'm just going to make things worse, haven't I? Oh, of course you haven't, love. Don't be so daft. No, I just wanted a word, you know, before I slip out through the back. I didn't want to go parading through the bar there. I wanted to say thanks for trying for me, love. I know you did it out of the goodness of your heart. Well, it's wicked you leaving like this after all this time. Well, it had to happen sooner or later, didn't it? No, to say, I mean, it's not easier this way than accepting a gold clock and, and making speeches. <laughs> No. Don't worry about me, love. It's you I'm worried about. Me? Well, yeah. He's a sly old fox, is that one. He's had his eye on this place ever since it was done up after that fire. And none of us took him seriously. 
Now look, he's got shut to bed and now I'm going. What, you think I'll be next? Well, I wouldn't turn me back. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I think I'd better get going, lovey. Good luck, Betty. Oh, I don't know who's going to need it most. Try, Glow. Yeah, not to worry. How was the meeting? Oh, I am rapidly coming to the conclusion they're all dafter than I am. <laughs> they are. And they're that flipping arrogant. Especially the men. Honestly. I'm sorry to say this, and you can say I'm biased if you like, but the main difference isn't between the two different political parties. It's between the majority, who are men, and who never listen to a word anyone else is saying, and the minority, who are women, who might just now and again admit they're wrong and listen to an alternative point of view. I see. Oh, I get that mad. Mind you, it's what stopped me being nervous, so maybe it's not a bad thing. Right, well, look, uh, I've got to be going now. Mm. Oh, by the way, Susan called. Oh? Yes, want to know what you're planning to do about Baldwin's sign. Oh. In fact, I think she's rather hoping you're not going to do anything. Now, that makes me mad and all. Oh, sorry. No, but they expect me to go out of my way to make life easy for them, and it doesn't seem to occur to them that they could have made life a lot easier for me if they'd gone by the book in the first place. Ah, yes, but you see, they did help to get you elected, so they probably think they've got one or two favours coming. Oh, do they now? Oh, now, Susan didn't say that. That's me being cynical. Yeah, well, I'm starting to get cynical as well. You can't help it in this game. And to be fair to her, she did say she hoped that this wouldn't set us at one another's throats again. So why do it? Why put the flipping sign up in the first place? Uh, no, don't know. See you later. See you, love. <sighs> Look, why don't you get yourself off? I'll do what there is to do with you. No, I've just about done it. Oh. Why are you so against Betty, Alec? Oh, because she's against me. Always has been. Still, that's her privilege, isn't it? She was very good at her job. Not bad. And we do need somebody. I mean, be honest, we can't carry on just the two of us, can we? Oh, I could carry on with you any day, darling. Is that meant to be a joke? Not a very good one. I want to know where I stand, Alec. I mean, am I going to be next for the chop, or am I expected to carry on here single-handed, or what? What? You, you for the... Gloria, what's brought this on? You know I value you more than diamonds at pearls. Oh, yeah, oh, sure. No, come on, you know I do. All I know is I've been stuck behind this bar with very little help for the past four hours. The only person that might have helped me came and went within the space of ten minutes, so I can't help beginning to wonder, am I being taken for a mug or what? Oh, no, no, come on, I'm not having you think that for the world. Look, put that tea towel down. Put it down. Now follow me. I don't know whether it's Betty Turpin put these ideas in your head or whether I've been remiss in not keeping you informed, but whichever it is, no, you're not being taken for a mug. You're certainly not going to be left to cope single-handed. Because this is Margot, who's going to be helping us out. Margot, this is Gloria. Pleased to meet you. Uh, hello. Margot's not only an experienced bar person, but she can also turn her hand to the old cordon bleu. And as of now, she is on the permanent staff of this establishment. So no more worries, eh? <sighs> no. Oh, sir. So. But you know, I only came around to see how you were. I I'm still in your muck. Well, I'm not exactly dressed to kill. No, but why don't I get myself up home and then I I'll no. call back later? I want to talk to you now. As soon as somebody's not around. All right, Nick. Yeah. We'll have to go fishing again, eh? Yeah. Oh. Don't go. Uh, well, well, I'll go then, shall I? No. Brian, would you mind taking Nicky out for half an hour? Please. It's just, it would be very helpful. If you like. Hear that, Nicky? Daddy's going to take you out for half an hour. Not until you've finished all your tea. You hear? Yes. Mm -hmm. You won't be long. Sit down. A cup of 
tea? No, thanks. I'll just go sort out my washing. Hi. Hiya. Right, then, we want some... Um... Orange juice. Yeah, we want some... Uh... Coffee? Yeah, coffee, but it was something else. Cottage cheese. <laughs> She can read my mind. I can read Kev's, but it gets boring, you know. All they want are chips and pizzas and hamburgers. Yeah, well, that's what most of us want, but we won't admit it. You all right, Mike? Yeah. Hey, listen, you go now, love. It's after half past five, you know. I'll just finish off this bread order. Oh, uh, Well, yeah. how do you manage that? I've got a bell that rings over there at half past five, and by the time the echo dies, there's not a soul to be seen on the premises. <laughs> ah, Councillor Barlow. How are you? Looking for you, as a matter of fact. Well, congratulations. Now you found me. I was just wondering if we could have a word in private. It's uh, about the sign. Oh, the sign, the wonderful sign. What I thought you'd fix it. I mean, there's no problem, is there? Hello, Deidre. Called earlier, didn't my dad tell you? Oh, uh, yes, he did. Councillor Barlow wants to talk to us about the sign. Oh. Yeah, but not here. Well, why not? I'm sure Alfred would want to hear about the sign, wouldn't I you? I only said that. I know you did, I know you did. And Susan wants to hear about it because it's as much her sign as it is mine, isn't it? And I'm not listening. And Sally's not listening. So, uh, off you go. All right, if that's the way you want it. Only, I was at the town hall earlier oh, on. which is why I couldn't find you. Shh. Sorry. And while I was there, I went to see the planning department, so I now know all there is to know about planning permission and the ins and outs of it as it affects signs. Yeah, you'll never know all there is to know. I promise you that. Yeah, well, I know enough. Enough to know that you do need planning permission for the sort of sign you've got out there. Yeah, in theory, yeah, but uh, this is amongst friends, isn't it? Well, it's more than friends. It's, uh, it's family, isn't it? Well... No, it isn't. Not when the blooming thing's stuck out there and I've got the likes of Percy Sugden mithering on at me about what am I going to do about it. Never mind about him. You do what you want to do. I already have. I've informed the planning department of what you've done and they'll be sending somebody round to have a look at it. And I would suggest you file an application as quickly as you can because if you don't, they can force you to take it down. And now I shall be perfectly happy if I never hear another word about signs for as long as I live. What you said. I know what I said. I thought you'd turn a blind eye. Didn't know she was going to make a song and dance about it. Well, don't look at me. Well, why not? You're the one that set her up. I didn't set anything all up. All right, all right. So, what does all this mean? It means I'm going to have a lot of hassle that I could well do without. She's good, though, isn't she, Deirdre? Where she sorted it all out. I'm glad I voted for her. I hope this doesn't sound too awful. What? I want us to stop seeing each other. For a while, anyway. It's not even that I don't like you. It really isn't that. Oh. And I'll always be grateful for all your help and support. But why? Why am I getting the elbow? Don't be mad at me, Jeff. Because of Brian. Because he's back on the scene. That's... Yeah. Look, I, I don't know what's going to happen between us, or, or even if anything will, but I just need a bit of space. A bit of time, just to see. You must be crazy. Stupid, I mean, after what he's done to you. He kidnaps your son. I mean, puts you through hell, and then he, he comes back and hangs around looking all pathetic. And you can't wait to show me the door. Well, yeah, OK. Yeah, I'm going. <laughs> but don't expect me to say that I understand. I'm not asking you to. Yeah, good. I'm sorry, Jeff. I really am. Yeah, of course you are. Well, will you tell him from me? I think he's really lucky to have such a stupid wife. I honestly don't know what's going to happen. Believe that, Jeff. I don't. But whatever it is, it'd rather happen between you and him rather than you and me. See you around. Oh. Hey, who's that? Her name's Margot. Alex brought her in in place of Betty. I like bottle, is it, Hilda? Yes, please. Oh, yeah, he hasn't wasted much time, has he? 
She looks a bit of a case, if you ask me. She seems to know what she's doing. Oh, I dare say. If she's been mixing with the likes of him, she's bound to, isn't she? Hi, Valga. How's it going? Oh, I'm fine. Oh. oh, evening, Mr. Gilroy. Hello, Hilda. Ooh, they look as thick as thieves to me. Hilda, I just work here. Mm -hmm. Now then, you're all right for an hour or two, aren't you, Liz? Yes. Yeah. Right, I'll be back before closing time. Just slip it out. Does it get busier later on? Well, there's generally a bit of a rush, you know, the last half hour. Oh, good. I don't like to be stood doing out. Why is that woman staring? Not balmy, is she? All right, love. Yes, quite all right, thank you. <laughs> That's Hilda. She does the cleaning here. Well, she doesn't have to look at me like I'm an extra bit of muck to be shifted. <laughs> Margot, can I ask you, when did Alec actually offer you this job? Well, don't know, really. I mean, I saw him last week in Duke of York, where I were working. And he asked me, did I fancy a change? And if ever I did, then to give him a bell. Then I fell out with landlord, or rather with his wife. Right old cow she is. But when you came in today, had he already offered you the job or not? Well, as good as, yeah. Anyway, why? Have I spoiled things for a mate of yours or summit? Not really. I think things were spoiled for her the minute Alec Gilroy moved in here. Oh, no. Hello. Oh, hello, Mrs. Oh, hi, Mrs. Hey, you've seen her then, have you? Oh, I knew it wouldn't be long before changes got underway. Hey. You've seen her? Well, I gather she's called Margot, oh, yeah. but what sort of a name that is, I wouldn't like to say. That new barman. All right, well, you've nothing to worry about, have you? You'll be tired on. Oh, I'll survive, yeah. We do, us cleaners, you know. <laughs> I've seen staff mm. come and go in here, been like changing of the guards sometimes, <laughs> but I've seen them all off. I'll still be here when that one's picking up her cards and all. <laughs> Go out and play, Nicky. This weather's too good to waste. Bye, Nick. Bye, Dad. You're not going, are you? I was going to make us something to eat. Oh, come on, Gail. What? Oh, it's OK. I'm not complaining, but... Let's not play games, eh? What games? I haven't eaten. I don't suppose you have. I was going to make us a meal. But you've got your boyfriend. Well, you have. Look, I don't want to make an argument. I'll give you a phone call when I get some accommodation sorted out. So I'll see you then. All right? Yeah. Brian? What? I haven't got a boyfriend. Well, whatever you want to call him. I told him I didn't want to see him again. When you were out with Nicky. You seem a nice enough fella. He is. I know. He was upset, I think. Oh. Yeah. Gail, just tell me what you want. Just tell me what you want me to do. Come back? Yeah. Yourself? You've got to be joking. I've got to drive halfway around London and then take some people out to lunch I don't even like. Yeah, but it's business. It certainly isn't pleasure, I'll tell you that. Oh, by the way, if Atkinson phones... Yeah. Oh, hi, Vera. Hi, hello. It's 
from your Terry? No, it's from a woman that used to live across the road from us in Earl Street. She's in Carfold, lucky devil. That's from Ella, actually. Mm. No, after he did ring me, I told you, didn't say. He's in Scotland, is he? Yeah. Is he still with that woman? Yeah, he's still with her, kid. But what can you say? I'm the best of families. Uh, yeah. Hey, listen. I want you to put a word in for me if you get a chance. What about? What well, about that shout that Susan's opening? She's going to need somebody behind the counter, isn't she? Oh, I fancy that, kid. Make a change from driving needles through my finger ends. But I've not heard of Vera. Yeah, but if you do, just crack on your thought about it and you think I'm more sorted out of all of us. Oh, I can't do that. Mm. Morning. Oh, morning. <laughs> morning, Susan, love. Left in charge, I say. Yeah, sort of. And why not, love? From what I've seen, you'll make a better job of running this place than he does. Oh, this one's got a stamp on. Oh, she insisted she had to have. She said it wouldn't be the same if I just brought it round. Oh, it sounds like Mavis does that. Oh. Well, what do you know? With all best wishes, love Mavis. <laughs> Hope you didn't charge her full price for this, did you? I most certainly did. You did. I did. Hiya. Hello, love. Happy birthday. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hey, Rita, you're going to have to stack up on birthday cards, you know. That rack must be almost empty by now. Hey, cheeky, that's not your rubbish from the cabin, you know. Hey. What an expensive one is that? I had to go in the middle of Manchester for it. Oh, so it is, I can see. Yes, thank you. It's very nice. How old are you, anyway? Is it 49 or 50? 48, as a matter of fact. I thought you were older than that. No, I just look older. Right, well, I'm off. I'll see you at dinner time, okay. eh? Yeah. Oh, you won't see me. I'm offering to Angela. Yeah, I know you said. Oh, I thought I might do a bit in the shop this morning. What do you think? No. Don't bother. Take it easy while you can. See you later. Follow. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll see ya. So how does it feel to be 48 and look 50? It's all right. You don't sound right enthusiastic. Well, I haven't got a lot to sound right enthusiastic about, have I? Where are we going today? Oh, uh, your grandma orders. Not again. I'll take you there if you like. Yeah. No. Another hour before we're ready to go anywhere. Anyway. Got used to walking. Is that uh... Yeah. Only I'll have to get off. I've been with Alan Kev a bit too much as it is. Nicky, will you just run upstairs and bring me down that yellow baby grow? You'll find it on tower rail. Okay, Alan. Thanks. There's not you want me to pick up out. Uh, no, no, we're okay. Right then. Uh, I'll get off. Ryan, I don't want you to think that I'm stopping you helping or leaving you out or anything. It's just that I've got into a routine. I've had to. And, I mean, if I don't stick to it, I won't know where I am. I feel a bit like a paying guest. Well, I don't want you doing that. Thanks, Nicky. Look, um, we'll talk about it tonight, all right? It's your turn. It's your turn now. Oh, I'm sorry. Were you wanting to use this office? No, you're all right. <laughs> Only I know Mr. Baldwin's away for most of today, so I was taking advantage. Safe's carrying things backwards and forwards. Yeah, you do right. You, uh, you know Linda Norton from packing, don't you, Emily? Uh, well, I know who she is, yes. Only I've asked her to take over in the shop for an hour or two, and she seemed quite keen on the idea. And if she turns out to be any good, I thought I might offer it to her permanently. Oh, you don't think it's a good idea? Oh, it's not that, but uh, I just got the impression you were going to run it yourself. Oh, no way. I mean, I didn't mind setting it up, but standing behind a counter all day is not my idea of a good time. Oh, hey, uh, has she said out yet? Oh, something about that job. Not to me, she hasn't. I don't see why she should be, and she's quite capable of making her own mind up. Well, can't you sell to her, then? I can't, no. I've got better things to do than mind your business. Oh, well, what's this, then, Vera? Hey, what job? What are you on about? Oh, it's just, well, there's been some talk about me taking over at Patrick's shop, that's so... all. Hey, what did you wrangle that? Well, what you've been saying to my bit, only one that's doing any talking is you. Well, I'm not allowed to say much, so it's been confirmed. <laughs> Hello, Susan. Hello. She, she, she's not allowed to say old either. Right, I'm a friend to Angela's. Jan, do you mate ever ask you what your dad does for a living? Well, I guess it might come up in conversation. What are you telling? Well, that you're on this video shop. But I don't, do I? That's Rita's shop, is that? Right, I'll tell them. I mean, I'm 48 years old and I'm not exactly setting the world on fire, am I? What do you say when they ask you about Rita? Eh? Your mates. 
And they say, who do you live with? And you say, well, it's not just me dad, there's Rita. And they say, who's Rita? What do you say? Well, you might find this hard to believe, but we don't often talk about it. I'm drifting, Jen. I'm getting nowhere fast. Don't be daft. Look, we're both living in somebody else's house, and what income I do get comes from somebody else's shop. So what are you saying? Are you saying you want to marry Rita? Is that it? No. Well, what then? Well, I don't know. I suppose if I did marry her, it would make things a bit different, but she... She's not interested, is she? I mean, she's made that absolutely clear. Well, I quite like things over there. Oh, yes, so do I. They're very nice, very comfortable. The only trouble with them is they make me feel as though I've retired 15 years before I should have done. Oh. Morning, love. Hi, Nick. Hello, lovey. Suppose you're all ready for your dinner, then? Well, I am. I don't know about these two. Uh, <laughs> give us ten minutes, I'll perform miracles. You don't mind shepherd's pie again? No, very nice. Well, it's either that or we all share Sarah's pureed lamb and banana. Oh, well. Hey, oh. I'll go on. Right. Nicky, lovely, come on. You're going to help me set this table. Hello, oh, love. Come Hello. on. Hello. It's only a flying visit during my dinner hour, Alf. Only you've got kiddies, haven't you? Ah, uh, well, I thought school holidays as far as I can make out. <laughs> Oh, hello, love. Hello, Sarah. Hey, I hope you haven't come for your dinner, otherwise our shepherd's pie is going to look a bit thin. No, I'm hey, catering Alice. for myself today. It's uh, just that um, I wanted to know if you'd heard anything. What about? About Brian and Gail. Are they be back together or what? Well, he's still at the house, because I asked Nicky. Yeah, but for how long? And, I mean, is he back as a husband, or is he just going to find somewhere else to live? <sighs> There's a limit to what you can get from a six-year-old kid, you know. And I mean, uh, Sarah's no help at all. She just gurgles and throws a cup at you. Hey, Alfie, love it. Would you help Nicky set this table? There you are. Come on, Nick, let's put knives and forks out. But uh, I suspect there's a lot of pride involved myself. You know, which one is going to give way first? Yes, well, they've got a chance now they might never get again. It's up to us to see the take it. Might go along with that. Yeah, we'll even bang the blooming heads together if we have to. You're right. <laughs> Nothing wrong, is there? No, uh, just... You reminded me of something. Oh, well, I hope it was something nice. You know, when I was a little girl, people used to say I reminded them of Shirley Temple. I don't suppose... No. No. No, it was something you said earlier on about us um, having some checks we have to bank. There were nothing. Nothing. All right. Go and put these on the shelves. Right. Well, Hello, Hello, Mavis. Hello, love. Now then, are you hungry? Well, I haven't thought. Well, think. Well, I suppose I could find a corner for an odd sandwich. Right, we'll go to the Rovers. They've got some very odd sandwiches down there. Oh, <laughs> just hang on a couple of minutes then, only I had intended to go next door and get myself something, but, well, before Rita left. I didn't realise it had got to that time. Well, listen, you can always shut shop, you know. Oh, go on, close it for half an hour. Get yourself a three-course oh, meal. Oh, no, there's no need for that. If you just wait two minutes. Go on, then. Paul oh, Mavis, yeah? thank you for the card. Welcome. You ought to send Mavis out to Japan, you know. Show them what a conscientious British worker's really like. They'd only send her back. Ah. Actually, she reminded me of some. Not that she intended to, but um, she was talking about some cheques that we have to bank. Oh, I. Well, do you remember that cheque I gave you for £2,000 when you were going to put a deposit on Brian's garage? <laughs> Don't worry, I've still got it. I haven't blown it on the horses. Good. You mean you want it back? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, love. I mean, I just didn't think. Why didn't you say before? Oh, I didn't think of it before. Anyway, I'll go and powder my nose while I'm waiting for Mavis. Listen, I can uh, I can give you a cheque here and now if you like. All I've got to do is nip back home and get no, the cheque. No, don't. No, I could love you. I'm demanding it if you do that. Oh, no, fair enough. I mean, you've said you want it back. I mean, you're perfectly entitled to say yeah, that. Well, some of the time, not just now. Give it to me where it's more convenient. <laughs> Right, well, I'd better get off then and relieve Sally. All right, we're all right. Granny's coping. Uh, Mind you, don't be surprised if I run away with the milkman. Hey. What? Oh, God. You know I'm only joking, don't you, Nicky? Hey. Mind you, I'm not so sure. Have you seen our milkman? Never mind all that. Can I just say that? I just think that you and I have ought to tread a bit careful where G-A-I-L-B-R-I-N are concerned. Gail yes, Jack. yes, just take things a bit steady, you know, let them... Uh, don't be putting pressure on them. I, I'm not putting pressure on anybody. 
I'm the one that's under pressure, in case you haven't noticed. Yeah, well, I can just see you and Ivy getting your heads together. And all I'm saying is that we ought to stand well back and let you-know-who sort the future out together. Alf, oh, lovey, there is nothing I would like more than to stand well back. At least a lot further back than I'm able to do at the moment. But come on, give us some credit. We're not going to go storming in there and forcing them to each other's arms at gunpoint, you know. No, well... All right, then. On the other hand, sir, we have thought we'd go round there tonight. Just to see how they're getting on, you know. Oh. Right, thank you very much. Right. Oh, I well, had a nice time. Ah, oh, that was. Can't say I enjoy watching Alec Gilroy doing his mine host performance. Still a lot get used to it, won't I? Got used to VAT and breakfast television. Well, he always seems very capable to me. Oh, he yeah, is capable of anything. <laughs> You're just prejudiced against it. Okay, I'm going to put the kettle on. Do you want to cook? Yeah, I won't mind, love. Thank you. Hi. Oh, I thought you were going home. I've been home. Did you get my checkbook? <laughs> So, uh, we can complete that bit of business we were talking about. Um, do you want a cup of tea, Alan? I'm just going to put the kettle on. Not at the moment, thank you, Mavis. Then. Hey, you didn't have to go home for it. You could have given me that later. No, I like to keep straight with people. Especially people I live with. Oh, well, all right. Still, if something else crops up, you know, another business opportunity that you fancy, we could always take it out of my account again and put it in yours, couldn't we? What date is it? 20th. Tell me, did uh, Atkinson's phone? Yes, and I told them everything you told me to say, but they still insisted on talking to you. Oh. Would I get you to phone them back immediately you got in? Same old story, innit? So how was your trip? Oh, not bad. Tell you all about it later, eh? Anything happened here? Hello, uh, Mike Baldwin here. Could I speak to Jim Atkinson, please? I know there was something meant to tell you. Excuse me. What? Listen, don't go flying off at Andrew, will you? And it'll do you no good to call folk. Well, what? Tell me, will you? Linda Norton's got that job at factory shop, that one you set your sights on. Hey? Yeah, she's in there now. I mean, I only found out because I went to take some stuff in. Oh, well, how's she just standing in? We don't know she's been given the job regular. Oh, she reckons she has, because I asked her. Yeah, she says. Mrs Baldwin says that she can have that job permanently if she fancies it. Yeah, OK, bye. Well, you heard all that. I'd better get going, so, uh, well, see you when I see you. Well, couldn't you tell them you've done enough driving for today? Tell them you'd see them tomorrow. Well, I could, but they wouldn't like it. And they are good customers. I wanted to talk to you about the shop. Why, is there a problem? Well, there's not a problem. I know what I want to do. It's so, just... go ahead and do it. See you. I might have known I never stood a chance. Well, be fair, dear. She's entitled to put in there who she likes. Yeah, who she likes. Yeah, that's it. You've just put your finger on it. She'll put in there who she likes. And then she doesn't, well, they can go chase themselves. Come on, dear. I can't see it being all personal. Look, she once got me the sack from here. Are you forgetting, eh? I mean, that were personal, wants it. I don't know about getting you the sack. I do remember that she went out of the way to get you took back on. Yeah. Well, that one, she's regretting it now. Well, have you asked her yet? Have I asked you what? Rita, to marry you. No. Well, I am surprised. From the way you were talking this morning, I'd have said the proposal was on the cards. Well, that shows how little you understand your aged father. Well, you were feeling right sorry for yourself. Rita's house and Rita's shop. What are you baking? It's a sponge cake. Yeah, I suppose I would marry Rita if I had the chance, but she's not interested, is she? Of course she is. Why, well, she said something to you. Oh, no, but it's just obvious, though, isn't it? Oh, I see. It's another one of your brilliant insights, is it? Yes. You know, I'm studying you in case I decide to be a psychologist. Oh, I see. You want to just sweep her off her feet, tell her that she's getting married and you're not going to take no for an answer. Well, she'd say no is your answer, whether you want to take it or not. Well, not if it were all fixed up. If you'd already booked the church, a registry office. And everybody were there and that were first she knew of it. Oh, I see. I don't actually tell her about it in advance. I just lure her along to the uh, to the registry office, do I? Yeah, just think what a surprise it'd be. Ah, it'll be a surprise, all right. You can say that again. Oh, yes. Hello. Oh, hello. Oh, just another one of my daughter's daft ideas. Uh, Are you all right? Yeah. Hey, well, I've been busy. Oh. Well done. It's a sponge cake. Yeah. So what were you and your dad chuckling about? Can I tell her? No, I better not. We don't want to think we're always uh, conspiring behind her back, which we aren't, of course. Just now and again. Very glad to hear it. I'll tell you something else. Yeah. 
I haven't had a birthday kiss yet. Some things you appreciate more if you have to wait for them. Been on a cushion number, I believe, Linda. Well, yeah, I've been serving on it factory shop. It's been a nice change. Yeah, that it has. Thought you were telling us that you were tied on mm. for that job. Oh, well, I'm now a mistake. Been stuck on regular, have you? I hope so, yeah. Why? There's no top, is there? Oh, no, it's just that Vera really fancied it, didn't you, Vera? Mm. Look, it don't matter if I did or I didn't. I've obviously not got the right connections needed. Uh, what are you talking about? What connections? I was asked if I'd do a job and I said, yeah. I didn't know anybody else were after it, did I? Yeah, well, don't you think them should have been invited that were interested to apply instead of it all going on behind closed doors? There were no closed doors about it. I were working at my table as usual and Mrs Baldwin comes up in front of everybody and asks me if I'll do it. Hey, and if you don't believe me, you can get her to tell you. Uh, Mrs Baldwin, if you're serving on its shop, didn't you come and ask me to do it? Yes, why do you not want to? Oh, yeah, I want to, all right. It's just that uh, these here don't seem to think I should. Hey, it's not uh, doing me. Yeah, me neither. Uh, hang on, you. You're supposed to be our union representative, you are. Aye, oh, I know. And I've got some shopping to do and all. Yeah, I'll walk hey. down with you. Look, I don't want to be falling out over this. I've enough guys at home out coming here for them. Um... Yeah, well, what's the matter? I still don't understand. Well, some of us, you know, them that's worked it longest, well, they thought they should have had a chance to apply for a job instead of just giving it out without so much as a word like. Oh, you, you came and asked me, though, didn't you, Mrs Baldwin? It wasn't me as approached you. I asked you. Yes, of course I did. See? It was my decision, and quite honestly, Vera, I don't see any reason why it shouldn't have been. Yeah, well, I'm not saying that. Well, I mean, you were saying it a minute ago. Well, what if we say this? That if Linda changes her mind and decides that she doesn't want the job, then you'd like to be next on the list. How would that be? Well, yeah, yeah, I would. <laughs> right, I'll bear that in mind. Right, right. I must be doing it all, won't Mrs Baldwin? Oh, yeah, I mean, the last thing I want is Vera in charge. Right, well, so long as I know. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Right. We can't pretend nothing's happened. No. And we shouldn't expect things to be like they were. Oh, can't be, can they? They might be better. Yeah. But we are saying we're back together. I'm trying to make a go of it again. I am, if you are. And I am, if you are. Only if we're being honest. Yeah. You know, I, I still feel a bit awkward. You know, as if I don't know you like I used to. Well, I don't. I mean, you changed. I suppose I've had to. I haven't, though, have I? Well, no, well, uh, I didn't have to. I had the easy bit. What I'm saying is that it still feels a bit peculiar. It's bound to, for a while. You must let me start doing more. You know, with the kids and around the house and that. Yeah, well, like I say, it's a routine I've got into. But I'll get out of it. I promise. Good. And you? Oh. You've got to stop being so polite. That's who I was brought up. You know what I mean. Do you want me to do this? Do you want me to do that? Can, can I get the shopping? Yeah, you're all right, all right. That's because I, I still feel on trial. Well, you're not. No. Put your arm around me if you want. Uh, I don't want to seem fresh. Put your arm around <laughs> me. Yes, boss. <laughs> Great. Oh, two guesses who that is. Well, it's either your mum or mine. Bound to be. Mm. Oh, look at that. It's both Hello, love. We've not called to bad time, no, have we? No, come in. I've liberated two bottles of Alf's wine, just in case uh, they were out we thought worth celebrating. Kitty's not in bed already, are they? Well, Sarah Louise is, but not for much longer, and Nicky's having a bath, but he'll be down now, he's heard you. Sit down. Just thought we'd call and... Uh... See how you are, you know. Yeah. We're all right, aren't we? Mm, not bad at all. Good. Oh, now, come on, you know what we mean. What's going to happen? Are you back together again? I promised myself I wouldn't ask them this outright, but I can't help it. It's the only thing I can think of. Yes. Eh? We are. Back together again. Aren't we? Yeah. Oh. Oh, God love you. Oh. Oh, that's smashing news. Oh. It's a relief, I can tell you that. Oh. I'm going to give it a try and just see what happens. How do you mean, see what happens? We all know what's going to happen. You're going to live happy together again and look after them kids. All right, all right. <laughs> 
I am so oh. pleased for you, Robbie. You know that. <laughs> oh, ma'am. Now, come on, get us your coat, Sue, because I'm either going to have a drink or I'm going to start crying. <laughs> Mike? Oh, hi. Hi, uh, I've been waiting across at my dad to sort your car. Mm. Oh, you look shattered. Oh, I feel shattered. Still, Atkinson's were happy, so it was worthwhile. Yeah, well, forget Atkinson's. Let's get you a drink and something to eat. Mm, sounds good. Just put this away first, so then I know where I am in the morning. You would have been proud of me today. I dealt with a potentially explosive situation. Yeah? Vera Duckworth. Oh, I am proud. See, I finished setting up the factory shop, so I asked Linda Norton if she wanted to take over, which she does. Then I find out that Vera's got her eyes on it, so I have to calm her down, explain to her that I'd offered Linda the job first, but that I'd bear Vera's name in mind if it ever cropped up again. I see. So, off she went. Situation diffused. Linda Norton works in packing. Mm, that's right. She's staying in packing. Well, I don't want Vera. You're not getting Vera. Vera's a machinist. Well, who then? You. You wanted the shop, you run it. Oh, come on, Mike. I mean, I didn't mind setting the shop up, but I'm not a shop assistant. I mean, I'm not serving behind a counter all day. Oh, you're not? No. Then close it, then. Mike! I'm serious. There's only one job going over here, and that's behind that shop counter. You can forget Linda, forget Vera. They got jobs already. You wanted the shop, so <laughs> you run it. Look, if we're going to have the same pig-headedness we got last night, I'd rather take my own car. Oh, give me strength. I'll run through it just once more to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. It was your idea to open a shop, right? Right. You wanted to wave the flag, take all the glory. I don't know about take all the glory. No problem, I agreed. I came up with the ante and left you alone to run it, right? So then, on your suggestion, we open a shop so we can sell direct to the punters, including your kid stuff. Is it so mind-boggling to expect you to run it? Mike, you know I'm more used to you out on the road, getting decent orders off the retailers. Not stood behind some dreary little counter on the shop all day. It doesn't make sense, and I'm not doing it. Well, Linda Norton is certainly not doing it. I'll tell you that for nothing. Well, I've already given her the job. She's already got a job, working for me and packing. Do you really think that's all I'm worth? A rotten shop assistant? You are worth whatever you make of yourself, darling. No more, no less. And just for the record, how do you think I started? On a flaming barra. Right, I'll see you later. Oh, oh right. Here she is, then. Oh. One little princess to drive oh. Granny Audrey bonkers. Oh, do you know, it's lovely to see, well, you know. What? You being so nice with her. I wasn't so nice to her at five o'clock this morning. Was that my little dimple bum, eh? Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Come on. Forgot to tell you that uh, Pauline's looking after Nicky. Oh, that's a good job because she's a bit of a handful for Audrey these days. She is not. Yeah, well, she's not as young as she was, you know. I'm in just as good a shape as I was 20 years ago, thank just you. Just more of you. Oh. I think I'd better get off to work, you know, before you do get in the ring and start round two. Oh, and Audrey, uh, thanks for looking after her. Oh, I think nothing of it, Chuck. I've already got one silly big kid to look after. What difference does another make? It means a lot to get, you know, keeping the job on. Well, she always did have a strong independent streak, that daughter of mine. Bye. See you, love, babe. See you, lad. <laughs> He's learning, isn't he? Which is more than can be said for you. Not as young as I used to be, honestly. These fellas. They don't know how to talk to us girls, do they? <laughs> uh, um, I'd, uh, I'd just like to say there, uh, well, I mean, I know there are times when people want to say things and they don't always say them because, well, under certain circumstances it can be a bit embarrassing, but... Um, well, I always think if it comes from the heart and, it, and it's well meant, well, nobody takes offence, do they? No, I'm sure they don't. No. Mavis, love, nobody could possibly take offence at what you just said. Oh, good. Because nobody can understand a blind word what you're on about. Well, it, it's about that rumour that we heard, you know, that we both said we hoped was true. Of, like, about Gail and Brian getting together again. Is it true? Yes, it is. Oh! Oh, I'm so pleased for you. Well, I mean, I wasn't sure that it was just a rumour, and, and if I'd 
said anything to you. Well, you'd wonder what I was on about if I said that. I hoped it all worked out and you'd both be happy, which I do. Well, if you can decode all that, love, the same for me as well. And me. Thank you. All of you. Thanks. Oh. Bye, now. Bye. Bye. Oh. <laughs> Soppy women. Oh, well, this is one occasion when I, I make no apology for being one. <laughs> Me neither. Oh, so you like a bit of a twist in the tail, do you? A few surprises along the way. Why not? If it has a happy ending. I knew we were listening, you know. Every time I lit a candle, I knew he heard my prayers. Well, it don't mean it answer them. Oh, don't be so flipping cynical, you. Oh, cynical. All prayers don't get answered. You can say that again, or else I'd be sat on a yacht in Bahamas with Clint Eastwood blowing kisses down my little girl. All prayers do get answered, it's just that sometimes answers no. It wasn't no in your case, was it, I've Personally, myself, well, I think it's smashing. Happy ending after all that hard work. It's romantic. Hey, you know, I suppose we'll have to get married all over again. They are married, Shirley. In the eyes of God, they were never hotels. Yeah, but not by the law of the land. Yeah. They're divorced. So, by law, they're living in sin. Well, not what you call a massive improvement in turnover, is it, eh? Figures are up, though. Yeah, but not enough. Serves me right for breaking the rule of a lifetime and letting my judgment be influenced by other considerations. You did the right thing encouraging Susan. She's worked very hard. Well, I'm not saying she hasn't. I'm just saying that perhaps this scheme was a cockeyed idea in the first place. It's not exactly a total disaster. Uh, it's not exactly a wildfire success, is it, eh? I can hardly go ordering myself a roller on those feet. More likely a pair of roller skates. Uh, sorry to bother you, Mr. Ball. Yeah? Well, there's customers complaining outside shop. What about? Well, it should have been opened at nine. It's nearly half past. Well, don't go bothering me. Go and find Mrs. Baldwin. She's not in yet. Nobody's seen her. Hey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, she did say she was going to be a bit late. I remember. Look, uh, be a good girl. Pop over there and cover for her, will you? Sure, I mean, I'm hoping to work there permanently. No, not it? permanently, just till she gets back. Oh, but she said I could... Sorry, darling, crosswires. Mrs. Baldwin would be running the shop. You're staying in packing. Well, go on, then off you go. Don't want to keep paying customers waiting, do we? Hey. I thought you'd gone into town. Well, I got as far as Michelle's and realised I forgot my purse. We're going to look for it, then. Very anxious to get rid of me. Hey, what are you doing with that? Rita keeps her private papers in that. Here's a birth certificate in. It's none of your business, and don't be so cheeky. Well, it's none of your business either, you know. No wonder you look so guilty when I came in. Were well, you after any road? A late husband's death certificate. Ooh, what for? Now listen. Can I trust you? See this wet, see this dry. Never mind I... about that. I'm being serious now. You know the stuffed idea you had about me inveigling Rita into a secret wedding? I didn't say inveigle. I don't use words like inveigle. Well, whatever. Hey, you're not going to do it, are you? You are! Cool! Ha! Ah, so my daft idea is not so daft after all. Well, <laughs> I'd never have believed it. But apparently I can set the whole thing up and she needn't know a thing about it until she arrives there on the day. See? I told you she'll love it. Well, maybe. Hey, she will. But if I do it, of course. Look, even us die-hard feminists secretly yearn to be dominated by a sexy, strong, powerful male animal. Which, of course, I am. Which, of course, you're not. But Rita knows which side of bread's buttered. Yeah, maybe you're right. You know, perhaps I just ought to wait for the right opportunity and, uh, well, ask her straight out, what do you think? And if she says no? Well, why should she? She did last time. Oh, yeah, but that was before we'd uh, lived together. Oh, and now she's had all these months to appreciate what a five-star husband you'd be. Something like that, yes. I still think she'd prefer to be swept off her feet. Look, any man can ask a woman to marry him. But actually arranging the old shebang is a fabulous surprise. Now, that's what I call romantic. She does something to swank about in the hairdressers for months. Right, I'm off, Emily. You've got a number if you need me, haven't you? No, I'm not expecting any dire emergencies. You'll be back roughly when? Uh, late afternoon, -ish. if the deal goes through. If not, I could be back within an hour. It's not like you to be so negative. No, it's not. I see you've ditched her and Al, then. Are you talking to me, Vera? Linda Norton. She does how that shop job's been took off her before she's even properly started. Not that she's been much cop, but she's one of us. Not classy enough for your wife. Vera, 
get back to your work. It's not to do with you. Quite. Hmm. Quite. Stuck up, madam. She thinks we're a load of common peasants, sir. Well, I'll show her who's common. Oh, you do, Vera. You do. Oh, you finally got here, then? I've had things to do. Yeah, opening a shop was one of them. Well, I'm here now. The punters have been here for two hours. Don't worry, though. I've got one of the girls to cope. What, Linda? Until you got here, yeah. But you pull this stroke again and you can forget it. The place stays shut. Mike Baldwin, turn away paying customers. You said it, darling. That shop is your responsibility and no one else's. And the sooner you realise that, the better all round. See you later, Emily. You've been back long? Uh, five minutes. Is uh, sandwiches all right? When it's such a lovely day, I thought we'd go to the park. It'd be nice to sit in the sun. Oh, so we'll have only got half an hour. We'll do it at the weekend. We'll take the kids to the seaside and have a proper picnic. It's smashing. You shouldn't have come back if you were busy. Well, we made a date, didn't we? And it's your half day, so here I am. I don't break dates for pretty girls. Are you flirting with me, Brian Tilbury? I'm trying to, but it's not that easy. Oh, thanks. I mean, you know, how do I go on? Can't just pick it up from where we left off, can we? You just carry on like you've always carried on. Yeah? Look where that got me. Brian. I know. It's just the same for me. I mean, we're bound to feel, well, awkward with each other for a bit. It's been a long time. I suppose we treat this like a second honeymoon, then. I wish I'd have known. I wouldn't have put honey in in these. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about honeymoons, um, if I know my mum, it won't be long before she'll start hinting that we should uh, get married again. You know, make it official. You tell her exactly what I'll tell my mum if she asks. It's none of their business. Oh. You don't reckon it's worth thinking about, then? Brian, we've got a lot of patching up to do. I don't think weddings even come into it right now. <laughs> Thing we know we'll have a crawling all over the place. We'll just have to put us bits and pieces up on top shelf. <laughs> She's a little love. She can wreck the joint as far as I'm concerned, eh, Freshie? Mind you, we must spoil them anyway, must we? I can't help feeling a bit guilty, though. What's over? Well, you bear it brung to me now. I'm a granny and all. I should take my share. Ah, they come on. You've got your living to earn. <laughs> no, just same. I don't mind. I enjoy it. Well, for most of the time. Hey, I've got a system now. Do you know, I never thought the day had dawn. Well, they both appreciate it. I do know that. So your Brian said this morning, mind, I've got all the thanks I want, seeing them together again. Do you know, that's about the only thing me and you have ever agreed on, isn't it? We won out in the end, didn't we? Eh? <laughs> Unbeatable team, Granny's United. Oh, I can't say as we had much to do with it. I mean, I got accused of interfering more than once. So did I, love. So did I. Water off a duck's back. <laughs> hey, yeah. Uh, have you thought about what you're going to wear? You know, we ought to try and coordinate our colours. I went to a wedding once, and the bride's mother wore coral, the groom's mother wore fuchsia, the vicar wore sunglasses. What wedding? What colours? Your son, my daughter's. Not said no to me. Well, they've not said no to me, love, but they will. Well, I mean, uh, I'm the last one to raise an eyebrow, but I mean, you won't want them living over brush, will you? I've had this row once today. They are not living over the brush or in sin or anything else you want to call it. In God's eyes, that marriage has existed and it always did. Oh, well, he can see it how he wants. I mean, he probably leads a far more exciting life than what I do. But if there's an excuse for a family rave up on the horizon, I don't think a little push in the right direction will do any harm, eh? Mm. Mm. It's just a pity you're too young to be a bridesmaid. She trusts you to choose tonight's entertainment, does she? Yeah, I want a right good cops and robbers. I'm fed up watching her soppy romances. Hiya. Hello, love. Hello. that girl's baby outside? She's all right, isn't she? Yeah, she's great. She's bashing hell out of her raffle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Any excuse to push that pram, eh, Al? Yeah, well, you've got to admit she's a little tracker. Mm. Are you taking the next door to see her mummy? No, no, girl's got half a day off, so she's going to buy something nice. So the oracle tells me. <laughs> It'll be night, isn't that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, is my dad not here? No, he mizzled off after dinner and I've not seen him since. He'll have gone to buy himself some sexy nighties as well. <laughs> Hello, love. Oh. Just a small packet of aspirin, please. Oh, dear. 
bad is it, Emily? Oh, it started in the post office. It's just like a hundred little men with sledgehammers inside my skull. Hey, I've had that. You want to get an eye test? Oh, it's nothing to do with eye strain, huh? Strain of a different kind, oh, more like. Oh, dear. Problems? Oh, certain relationships work are somewhat fraught at the moment, and naturally it all seems to rub off on me. Anyway, thanks. So long. Uh, hope you're soon back, Emily. Yes. Bye, then. What? Certain relationships. Oh, it is irritating when people try to be enigmatic. I mean, I'm a very open person myself, so I hate mysteries. Come to think of it, Mike was in the shop earlier on and got a right face on him. Oh, it'll be marital problems, will it? Oh, well, why couldn't it be money problems or health problems? A nosy folk speculating about your love life problem. It would be the generation gap taking its toll. I knew it would. I mean, spring and autumn never work. Yeah, well, I've got to admit that it's enough of a gamble getting married in the first place without putting complications in the way. Oh, I don't agree. If the two right people get together under the right circumstances, well, I think it couldn't be the best thing to happen by when it pulls. Hey, Rita? Minute. No, I've just popped in for a quick hello. I don't want to be late home. Oh, quite right. Brian, love, um, don't snap me head off, but, um... Go on. Well, it's not me, love. I mean, I mind my own business, you know that. It's just that, uh, well, a couple of other people have quizzed me, you know, about uh, chances of you and Gail getting wed again, you know. I mean, Audrey would like it for one. Mm, Audrey would? Yeah, and I must admit I can see her point of view. Can you? I thought as far as you were concerned, we never got divorced. Oh, you didn't. So, uh, if we got married again, it would be a complete waste of time. And money. Oh, not, not exactly a waste, Brian. I mean, it's... Um... Brian Tilsley, I could thump you, I could, honest. Of course I'd like to see you and Gail get blessed in church again. If only to let people know that you're back as man and wife. Well, Gail doesn't think it's necessary. Gail doesn't? Well, have you asked her? Well, I mentioned it. She wasn't very enthusiastic. But I thought, hang on, she woke up last night that told us you're back together again. I mean, she seemed thrown to bits. She is. We both are dead chuffed. That doesn't mean she wants to make it all legal again. Well, I can't understand that, Brian. Look, surely she still loves you, and well, if only for kiddies' sake. I don't want to push him, well. And perhaps I've done a bit too much of that in the past. So, let's just leave off buying the confetti for a bit, eh? Still here, then? Evidently. Busy day. Not bad. Uh, mini skirts are going quite well. Good. One of the fashions I'm glad to see back in. Stayed in the shop, then? Had no choice, did I? I don't know. Could have skived off like you did this morning. And what would you have done, then? I told you. Forget Linda, what's her name? I'd have closed the whole operation down. Well, that's why I stayed. Not to give you the satisfaction. Satisfaction? Darling, turning away paying customers has never been my idea of fun. You'd have done it there, wouldn't you? Just to get back at me. Darling, I don't want to get back at you. God, blimey. How have we gone this far off the rails? I, I don't want to hurt you. No, you just want to discourage me and frustrate me and humiliate me. Hey, hang on, me. hang on. Where are you getting all this garbage from? Well, it's true. From? I've been thinking about it all day. I don't know why I didn't see it before. See all what before, for Pete's sake? Well, you never wanted me to have a career, did you? Never. Whose money was it that funded the whole shooting match in the first place? Father Christmas? Oh, yes, it was yours, but only because I pushed you all the way. I mean, you weren't keen to second any of your girls to do my samples, were you? My advertising budget was a joke. In fact, the whole thing's been done on a shoestring. Oh, I see. Well, it's a bloody good job I wasn't expecting any thanks for setting my wife up in business, isn't it? I gave you every chance you wanted. I did everything I possibly could to get this kids' wear thing off the ground. Now, just because it hasn't been the success you thought it was going to be, don't you put the blame on my doorstep, young lady. We had a bargain. 
I kept my side of it. What bargain? Oh, you've got a short memory, haven't you? Wasn't it agreed at Christmas you could have a career and a family? Millions of women do. So that's what this is all about, then? Well, what did you think it was all about? I don't know. Jealousy, male supremacy, wanting to keep the little woman under the thumb. But, oh, no, it's all about your obsession with having kids. Obsession? I thought it was a, a normal human urge. Success was the last thing you wanted for me. All you ever wanted was a wife stuck at home washing flaming nappies. Well, I won't be manipulated, Mike. I won't. Hi. Are you back? Is Rita not with you? No, she'll be here soon. The rep came in just as we were leaving. You can help me get tea started. Yeah, OK. So you tell me what you've been up to today? Up to? Well, I know you've finally been in the shop. You've been fixing it up, haven't you? You know, this is a crazy idea, and if I had any sense, I'd forget all about it right now. Dad, you've been down the registry office, haven't you? Only to make a few further inquiries. Oh, I? And to fix up a date while I was there. A wedding date? No, a date to get my flipping hair cut. What do you think? Oh, well, you'll need to get that done as well. Sir? So what? When is it? It's classified information, is that? But if you'd like to put a ring in your diary around Wednesday, August the 5th... Uh... August the 5th? Fantastic! Now listen, I'm not joking about this being top secret, you know. This is one marriage where nobody's going to know about it in advance. Yeah, especially the bride. <laughs> Now. What's all the rush for this morning? Shut the door. Eh? Shut the door. We're going to have to tell Mavis. You what? I said we're going to have to tell Mavis. Morning. Morning, Morning, Rita. Oh, what a lovely morning it is, too. Mm. Would you like an egg for your breakfast? No, thanks, sir. Just the boring old grapefruit and cereal, eh? Yes, please. Is any wonder a life lacks excitement? Hey, I've got up, haven't I? Come here, staggered downstairs. Who says my life lacks excitement? What's got into her this morning? I never have eggs for my breakfast. I don't eat eggs ever. Search me. Teenagers are not like us, are they? And girl teenagers are even more peculiar. Listen, when I was 16, I used to sleep with a sailor's hat van round my neck. Who was a sailor? No idea. Found the hat van on a bus. HMS Pen it was. Hey, talking of excitement, lady, I think I'll have a piece of toast this morning. Sugar the diet. I take it you are coming to work this morning? Of course. Good, then perhaps we can come to some arrangement. Arrangement? Yeah, so it doesn't appear too obvious to everyone that we're having a, well, difference of opinion. I haven't made it obvious. Oh, come on, you were giving me the acid in front of Emily yesterday. Only after you humiliated me. Ah, you're too sensitive. Too sensitive. I give Linda Norton a job in the factory shop and then without a word to me, you go and fire her. How can I fire her when there wasn't a job in the first place? You work in the shop, there's definitely not enough work for two. Oh, I am sorry, Mr Baldwin. Of course, you're the high and mighty boss, aren't you? You decide what I do for a living. In the factory, I do. Definitely. And what about here? Here? Well, isn't this where I become pregnant at your command? Not at my command. We made a deal. Yes. I said I'd have children eventually. Well, as far as I'm concerned, eventually's arrived. I'm not a brood mare, Mike. I don't care what you call yourself. I want the kids. We made a deal. And don't you try and Welsh on it. Mike! Hey, Jenny. Do you think this new lipstick suits me? Well, would you like a diamond ring? Mm. Hey? What is the matter with you this morning? You're nattering on 90 that doesn't one minute in a world of your own next. These my jeans. Well, get a new pair if they're too tight. Ha-ha, <laughs> I meant my hormones. They're a bit feverish today. Oh, well, my mother used to recommend a dose of castor oil for that. <laughs> right, come on, love, I've got a lot to do this morning. I've been waiting for you. 
Kipo, I'm always waiting for you. It's one of the great universal truths. Men are always ready before women. Don't lose your temper, Rita. Stay calm, even under intense provocation. Thanks. Dad. What? I think the sink's blocked. Well, it were all right five minutes since. Well, it's blocked up now. Well, it'll have to wait till dinner time now. Well, what about the washing up? And I've got some washing to do. Oh, listen, love, you better see to it. I'll dash off, let Mavis get her breakfast. Dear, old oh dear. Are you sure it's blocked? No. Well, you're not sure it's blocked. I'm sure it's not blocked. That was just a ruse to get you on your own. Look, Dad, we're going to have to tell Mavis. Why? We might as well take out a front-page advert and the recorder has tell Mavis. She's psychologically incapable of keeping a secret. It'll pop out of her like toast out of a toaster. Well, I know it's risky, but we want to have a proper wedding, don't we? I mean, even if it is going to be a complete surprise to the bride. Not to mention a fatal shock. Oh, don't say that. I'm getting cold feet already. Perhaps we ought to forget about the whole thing, what do you think? Hey, don't be daft! Like, it's the most incredibly romantic idea that I've ever had. I'll probably write a story about it and sell it to Mills and Boone. Anyway, as I was saying, we want to have a proper wedding, don't we? So we're going to have to have other people there. Like a best friend who just happens to be Mavis. Well, she'll have to organise a shop too if you're taking her on a honeymoon. You are taking her on a honeymoon, aren't you? Yeah, of course. Hey, where? Um, well, I haven't decided yet. Oh. So Mavis just has to be told. All right. But in absolute privacy and in the strictest confidence, right? Don't do it when Rita stood behind the magazine rack. I do know how to be subtle, you know. Well, you made a right mess of your affair with Gloria Todd, didn't you? I mean, you were about as subtle as a dustbin lid. Now, in fact, I think I'd better tell Mavis. You might make a mess of no, it. No, 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 I'm going to tell her. Just to make sure she gets the proper story and not the Mills and Boone version. Do you know he's got a face like a razor blade, Baldwin, haven't you, when it's wrong side out? Oh, I don't know. One thing you've got to say for Baldwin, he's good looking. Hey. Do you know what he reminds me of? A little jockey. <laughs> hey, that's a good one. We'll enter him at three o'clock at Goodwood yeah. this afternoon. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I bet he'd win and all. He's very quick on his feet, is our Michael. I mean, he gives us a run for his money, doesn't he? Yeah, but he won't quick enough for her, though, what are you? Who's her being? Who are you pulling to pieces this time? Goldilocks, Mrs. Mighty Mouth. Sure. I don't know. He certainly put her in a place when she tried to move Linda out of packing onto the factory shop. Yeah, but she'll not set that line down, you know. No, she'll little spitfire her. All in the eyes, love. Hard as nails. Yeah. Oh, she's here. Morning, Mrs. Baldwin. Good morning. What did I tell you? There'll be skin and hair flying in there. We should have a bug in that office, you know. It'd be a lot more entertaining than music while you were. <laughs> Who's been making all these phone calls? No idea. Also, we've got a phantom phoner in the place, have we? Making long distance calls like she was Busby. I'm sure it must be a mistake. Yeah, well, check it with British Telecom, will you? I'm not paying that until it's sorted out. Excuse me, are you going to be long? Yeah. Hello? Well, which is it? Well, um, actually, I, I've completed my business. I'll, I'll um, check with British Telecom right away. They are. You've done it again. You've embarrassed me in front of Emily. I don't like being walked out on, Mike. I had nothing more to say to you. It wasn't a bad exit line, I'll give you that. Almost as good as saying I am a brood mare. Uh-uh, now just a minute. You said that. Women that stopped just processing children years and years ago, Mike. Susan, this is not the place for another Barney. We've got an audience out there with bigger ears than Red Riding Hood's grandma. Well, where else am I supposed to have an argument with you if you keep walking out on me? All I'm saying is that you promised we'd have kids. When I'm ready. When I've done something with my life. <laughs> well, that could take forever. Oh, thanks for the vote of confidence. They're going at it, Amaran. Tom. Yeah, man, you enjoying it? Yeah. It's nice to see that your so-called betters can ball at each other. It's like home from home in there. Look, you can see. OK, so the children's clothing idea wasn't a great success. <laughs> well, that is the biggest understatement of the year. And I can do without your sarcasm. But I've learned a lot, Mike. It's been good experience. I'm a lot more used to the firm now, and I'm a lot more used to you. Oh? How? Surprise me. You're an insulting so-and-so. Don't answer it. You've got to be joking. That guy out there think it's a fire bill and go out for a sunbathe. Hello, Mike Baldwin. Oh, hello, Phil, mate. How are you? Still earning a fortune. <laughs> you little liar. You're like a farmer, you are. All gloom and doom. Yeah, of course I've got time for a natter. Hang on a minute, though, Phil. 
It's Phil Simpson. He wants to have a natter, so we natter. It's called uh, public relations. Hello, Phil. Yeah, mate, go on. <laughs> no, really? Give him some stick, did you, love? That's the way. Don't let him grind you down. Hey, I've better heard that in there, Vera. Well, so what? You don't have to push your luck sometimes, Vera. Yeah, I know. I'm a right little daredevil as a kid. You know, I was planned to top a turkey red chimney for a bit. Hi. Where's my dinner? I was doing my Madonna impression then, Kevin. You're supposed to charge in, fling yourself at my feet and swear and die in love. What do I get? Where's my dinner? I thought you knackered locked or something then. That's why you sat there like that. Fish fingers and baked beans and some nourishing brown bread and butter. That do you? Well, I was expecting lamb chops, newbie pieces and garden and peas. So, we've both been disappointed, haven't we? What? I've been thinking. Ooh, women shouldn't do that, you know. Not equipped for it. I think they're being very selfish. What with? Well, keeping our happiness in this little love nest we've created for ourselves. Well, I think we ought to be sharing it. Oh? Huh? What do you propose doing? Inviting Man United, no? Well, I don't mind that. If I can have the real Madonna. It can be done much easier than that. Why? What are you cooking up now? A housewarming party. Yeah. If you like. Well, show some enthusiasm. Wouldn't cost us much. I'd just ask everybody to bring a bottle. Mm. And what about Alf Gradgrind? Yeah, what about him? Well, he's not going to be too struck on others having a party here, is he? After that, I'll ask one of Mrs. Hill's, you know, Terry and his capers. Well, he'll have to lump it. What we do in our private love nest is our business. I hope so. Otherwise, we would have got arrested. Kevin. What? Is it, you know, still fabulous for you? What was you talking about? Parties? Answer me. Well, when I've had a couple of pints, it's good, yeah. Only that, I need a double gin. <laughs> Hi. Uh, half a bit of pizza. This baby's not been in. You've not lost her, have you? She's not absconded under a bag of daily mails. No, no. Just that I thought she said she was coming in here for lunch, that's all. Perhaps she's gone to the flying horse. Between you and me, the food's a lot better there these days. Oh. Isn't this new lady much good with the old microwave, eh? Well, if you listen to her and Alec Gilroy, you'd think she was Mrs. Beaton. But I'm not impressed. <laughs> it's been better than going to pictures this morning, hasn't it? <laughs> Rabbit age and youth cannot live together, Vera. No. Youth is full of pleasance, age is full of care. Did you just make that up? Did I? Like it's Shakespeare. What do you know about Shakespeare? Well, I know that for a start, don't I? I bet that's all you don't know. <laughs> when icicles hang by the wall, and Dick the Shepherd blows his nail. And Tom bears logs into the hall. And milk comes from Oh, the that's home. not Shakespeare, it's a nursery rhyme. It is from Love's Labour's Lost. You pretend there's not actually been educated, Shirley. <laughs> it's not difficult when you're naturally clever either. <laughs> oh, just a minute, love. Can I see that? It's only a sandwich. Famous last words of the catering trade. I mean, even British Rail are proving it to be a thing of beauty. Oh, well, not bad. In fact, very good. But not so heavy-handed with the garnish, eh? You don't change, do you, Alec? You're still saving bits of string. In the beginning there was thrift, and then there was opulence. Gospel according to Alec Gilroy, love. You've got no respect for authority these days, your average worker. Ah, they should never have been taught to read and write, Jack. Much better if they'd left them illiterate. That's why I keep you on. <laughs> Another cracker. Hey, talking about food, I've got a mate of mine who could supply us with chicken portions. Very good, very reasonable. Calls all these chickens for kill because they've all got... Jack, them. if he's as good as his wit, he'll be inedible. No, 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 no. Well, I'll get those, maybe. Oh, well, thank you very much. Oh, <laughs> thank you. My pleasure. Uh, wasn't that nice of him? Mm. It was, though. What? <laughs> I don't know, really, but it's been in a funny mood all morning. 
every time I turned round, he seemed to be behind me. And he's been beaming a lot. Funny sort of a beam. Like that. <laughs> Back to the grindstone. Mm. Oh, I'm not looking forward to it. <clears throat> Mr. Baldwin snarling at everybody. Susan sulking. Perhaps we're better off single after all, Evelyn. <laughs> Indeed we are. Uh, Mavis. Yeah? Have you got a minute? Yes, I have. Uh, I'd like a word with you, uh, privately. Privately? Um, in the house. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, I was just going Sorry, to... Sorry, it won't take a minute. Excuse us, Emily. Yeah. Bye. Bye. What did you want to see me about? I've got a problem. A problem? What sort of a problem? Oh, oh you're here. You sound disappointed, Mavis. Do you think he'd load you around for immoral purposes? Silly, Jenny. Of course I didn't. No. I need your help, Mavis. With this problem that you've got. Well, actually, Mavis, it's a top secret operation. It's going to blow your mind when he tells you. In fact, Mavis, I think you'd better come and sit down. You haven't got a bad heart, have you? All right, Jenny, all right. No, <clears throat> what it is, Mavis, is uh, I'm fixing up a wedding. Pardon? He said he's fixing up a uh, wedding. I heard what he said. Whose wedding? Mine. His. Yours, who too? Well, Rita. Rita. What did you think? Joan Collins? Well, she's never said a word to me about any wedding. Well, that's because she doesn't know about it. Doesn't know about her own wedding? No, isn't it fabulous? I think it's ridiculous. No, oh, have you no soul, Mavis? All right, Jenny, leave this to me, huh? Now, I'm fixing up to marry Rita. Right? At the registry office. Sorry. But she's not got to know a thing about it until the actual day. Until she arrives at the registry office. Fantastic. Now, the reason we're telling you all this, Mavis, is because we want you to be there. As her best mate. And to help organise things. Now, what do you say? Are you still with us, Mavis? You haven't seized up anywhere, have you? You're planning a surprise wedding, to Rita. Got we, it. Which she doesn't know anything about. Not a thing. Oh, well, not unless you blab. Well, why, why don't you just ask her? Well, to be brutal, he's asked her once, hasn't he, and got the elbow. But with flowers flowering and lovebirds singing, confetti raining and maybe even the sunshine shining. How romantic can you get, eh? And she is a woman. What do you think, Mavis? I think it, it's a marvellous idea. Oh, God save us. Hey, look who's at office now. Well, you know, she'll be waiting for, don't you? And by the looks of her, she'll be going to give him some more air. He's going to be stone dead, that fella. Like a dog with a bone, isn't she? <coughs> Good afternoon, Mr. Baldwin. Hey, Oh, you are swearing for you, Mr. Baldwin. Do you know she can't bear to be separated from you? I don't think that's sweet. Belt up, Vera, or you'll find how sweet it is on the doll. I warned you, Vera. But we're only having a joke. It's different when he's making them at our expense. I thought you might have asked me out to lunch, seeing as we've got such a lot to talk about. I told you there's nothing to talk about, especially here. Vera thinks she's watching Dallas. I want to get this sorted out, Mike. There's only one way to sort it out. In the meantime, I suggest you get on with your big career, like running the shop. You're trying to provoke me, aren't you? No. Running that shop is not a full-time job. Oh, you thought it was for Linda Norton. It's not for me. Oh, no. I keep forgetting. You're a budding tycoon, aren't you? And you're a sarcastic sod. <laughs> so you keep saying. OK. So you want kids, right? Oh, I finally got through to you, have I? Well, so do I, in time. I've got plenty of time. After all, I'm still young, you know. I see. You see what? Well, you no, don't go on, say it. I haven't got that much time. Not as much as you, anyway. That's silly. Men can father kids till a ripe old age. And would you like a ripe old father if you were a kid? <laughs> I wouldn't. It's just another excuse. What is? That is, it's just another excuse to get what you want. Me stuck at home and bored to death and buried under a pile of nappies. You're just bloody selfish. Me selfish? 
You won't even meet me halfway. Not halfway. You've took your heels in and you want kids now. You've even tried to blackmail me into it. Well, I don't want kids now. I don't want kids for another ten years. Oh, yes, I like it. Yes, when the, when the punter comes through the door, he's presented with a very eye-catching, appealing, well-balanced picture. Just hold them positions when you're not busy. Don't go bunching together like a couple of grapes. Where do you want me, boss? In the middle, rub between two forms, eh? I should have been thinking about you, Jack. Yeah? Yeah, if we fixed you up with a dumb waiter, we could keep you in the cellar. <laughs> Every egg a bird. Uh, three pints and an orange juice glow, please. Not Gloria. Oblige the young gentleman. You haven't told me I can move yet. Don't be cute, Gloria. There's an age limit to cuteness. I like two. What about me? What about you? I've got some jacket potatoes in the microwave. They just might be going up in flames. A word of warning, love. One lady comic I can stand. Two might just activate me ulcer. Isn't he the most obnoxious little bunt you've ever come across? He's not that bad. I remember the days when he was quite cuddly. Yeah, well, they tell me the day he was born, his dad's Alsatian opt it. Cheers then, Kevin. Very noble of you. Yeah, yeah, cheers. Hey, we've been so busy in that shop today. Oh, fairly busy, aye. But I love working there, don't I? Yep, she does. Ah, well, it's good to hear that. Yeah, well, there's always something going on, you know, with different customers than that. Hey, it's a lot for me. Yeah, we have our jolly moments. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's the best move I ever made, you know, in the entire Are you doing the catering for this party, Mr Roberts? You know, supplying the caviar, the smoked salmon, not to mention the garlic bread. Party? What party is that, lad? Well, it's not so much of a party, more of an orgy, eh, Kev? <laughs> orgy? Oh, Kevin Sal's flatwarming party. It's going to be a right thrash party of the year by a mile. I thought I'd mentioned it to you, Mr. Robert. You never said oh to me about it. Oh, well, it's not going to be an orgy. Well, Kelly was just joking, weren't you, Kelly? No. She was. Yeah, I, I was only joking, Mr. Roberts. Well, anyway, it is our flat. Ah, it's all my shop. Would you like another drink, mate? Yeah, uh, no. Make your mind up. No, I'm going out tonight. Oh, you didn't say. Oh, didn't I? Then you haven't said much all afternoon. You've been very quiet. Not been in a brown study about a white wedding, have you? Weddings? No. Why should I be thinking about weddings? I mean, weddings are the last thing a person in my situation is going to be thinking about. <laughs> weddings, indeed. All right, all right. No need to get hysterical. Where are you going tonight? Out with Emily. Where? Well, just out. I mean, you don't have to have a specific destination on a lo lovely summer night like this. So you might end up trapping in Corporation Park. <laughs> and she a car, darling. <laughs> Look, I I'll have to go because uh, Emily will think I've got lost. Bye. 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 Do you know, I don't think she's going out with Emily at all. She's another that's been acting funny all day. Silent one minute, jumpy as a bean next. Still, I suppose the time to worry about maybe is when she's not acting funny. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Sorry, what? Oh, don't you stop. Thanks, dear. Hey, Abby, I've been meaning to ask you. Is there anything going on between Mr. Baldwin and his missus? Nothing. Give over, Abby. There's plenty going on. They're heading for a bus stop, if you ask me. Mm. I've noticed a certain atmosphere between them when I've been doing the flat. Well, what do you expect? Can't mix oil and vinegar. No. Worst day's work he ever did, marrying her. Well, she didn't exactly get the jackpot with him. <laughs> he just couldn't believe his luck when somebody that young threw herself at him. Man, yes, you were only after his money, weren't she? Have you heard yourselves, you two? Come on, they make a nice couple do, Mr. Baldwin and you, Susan. They're only falling out of this factory shop, that's all. Yeah, I'd like to believe that. Honest, I would. Mm. Me too. How much are you, mate? One eighty, pal. There you are. Keep the change. All oh, right. Thanks very much. Are you sure about this place? Well, looks can be deceiving, can't they? You say it's run by a Spanish bird, do you? Uh, well, no, her real name's Mabel. Well, I hope it's all right. You know, I want to have a good time. We'll look at it this way. 
I mean, it's a start, isn't it? It is a club. It's not a monastery. Good luck to you. Next on Plus, the Pierces and the Cochrans are giving some marriage guidance advice to some honeymooners in Duty Free. Mm -hmm. 